Ta-da! <laughs> Welcome to Hanging with Bears. Things are a little crazy around here. This is episode 550. We are recording. My neighbor started making a bunch of noise. He's been quiet all day. And then five minutes ago, he started running sanders and compressors. So if we have to go take this to a car, I can, I'll can. i be ready to do that. <laughs> if... Let me know if you can hear all that noise. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing, but uh, we have a great episode tonight. Let's get into this. Let's get into this. This is Hanging with Bears, episode 550. We have hometown bear and a special mystery guest, and very excited about all of this. Without further ado, let me invite hometown bear. Thank you, Van Dutch. Oakland in the house. Welcome, everybody. Hope everybody's doing great. I've got sunburned eyes. I've been out in the desert looking at this old guy's 100 cars and trucks. He has 100, I mean, he has 22 of a certain kind of Pontiac that only Van Dutch and my son know about. Yeah. He stopped, he stopped doing it. So maybe it's, it's all going to be fine. Let's see if hometown can, can get it on here. Let me check the invite. Hometown has left the building. That's hilarious. Maybe he'll come back. What's everybody up to today? He probably needs to, oh, I don't know. It says he's unable to join. Let's, uh, maybe he'll come back in and we'll see. I hope he doesn't need to. Usually that's, that's a false alarm when it says that they can't join. So it'll probably work fine. Let's just stay calm. Everybody stay calm. He's not even in here. That's the craziest part. He'll come back. Pretty sure he'll come back. I was uh, out in the desert with my son and his coworker. Uh, his coworker's name's Corey, and Corey's dad is 69, and he's got about 100 cars out in the desert. Has no running water, no electricity. He brings his water in on a uh, with a big trailer in a tank. And he's been, uh, he's had these cars out there and trucks since 2008. Okay, let me try hometown one more time. You're not even showing up on the list hometown why don't you try hitting the invite by try hitting the join button and see how we how we go you got deleted from the list somehow uh instagram is very um unpredictable with all this stuff ukrainian bear just got done changing the oil in your car pretty sure i didn't forget the oil filter o-ring yeah that's funny i know i told you not to hit the join button, but now I changed my mind because that other thing didn't work. We should see him any second now. It's gonna be exciting. All right. Hey. There we go. You sound great. Audio's great. Perfect. You made it. Yeah. So how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm all, uh, I'm kind of sunburst. Uh, Fork face is here. All right. Bowler. Uh, we were out in the desert. I don't know if you heard me talking about that, but uh, it was exciting. I, we, my sons and I do a bunch of car stuff. It's really fun. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's uh, one of those things that um, I wish I had more knowledge on, but unfortunately I just, I'm completely brain dead when it comes to anything working on cars. Some kind of skill I should pick up on though. Right. Well, uh, if you grow up in New Mexico, it's a rite of passage, you know, yes, yeah. that's it is. Uh, is this your first time on Hanging with Bears? Um, I believe this is my 
Third time, Wait, actually. First time, uh, first time with, with Papa J, then second time with Finksburg. Cool. Yeah, he's uh, he's acceptable. He's an accept he's actually a great host. He's yeah, he's a good guy. People that get on here with him that have never been on before, um, he makes people feel so comfortable. It's just like like you knew him all your life. You froze on a really uh, pretty good picture. Hope it comes back. Back. Are you on a, a weird Wi-Fi? Wobbly saying, hey, bears. That's funny. He's requesting to come back in. Uh, it just booted me out there. I'm not sure what just happened. Well well, I got good news. The, the face that you were making when it froze was handsome. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when it freezes, it's like on a blink or, you know, because you look like you fell asleep or th that That's was a good one. Probably one yeah. was... <laughs> well, I, you know, pretty much everybody knows who you are, but uh, just in case, especially for the people that might tune in on YouTube later, uh, Kind of give us the rundown on when you got into Owen, how you became the uh, animator extraordinaire, the cartoonist extraordinaire of the Bears, all that. Well, I guess um, how I became uh, familiar with Owen was I was working on Rick and Morty at the time, and uh, I was also working alongside with my sister, who's an animator as well. And I guess what happened was uh, she became aware of Owen first. Mm. And I was working on my own little side project called Hometown and involved a bear character called Tucker. And basically his whole uh, shtick was basically getting into garbage and just like rummaging through people's dumpsters. And he was what was called a quote unquote, a problem bear. So people are always trying to shoot him and chase him out of their neighborhoods. And then he's always just trying to come up with schemes and trying how to incorporate himself into society, right? So I guess what happened was uh, Anita was just telling me, hey, you should check out this guy Owen because he's got this whole community called the bears. And I think you would really click in with that. and. Uh, He's actually really funny. Like, you'd probably should, like, do animation for him sometime. Like, she just, like, said that, like, right on the spot. So I'm like, okay, I'll check this guy out. And, uh, yeah, it, I was just, right away, I was hooked. So, uh, well, this, this, of course, leads me to the question, is she still around or did she go with the, with the uh, Jim Bob people? No, no, she's, um, she, I think she's more bear adjacent nowadays. Like, she okay. became a mom after that, and then she's just been very busy with her own life and everything, taking care of her kids. But I always kind of keep her in the loop of what's going on with the bears, and there's a chance she might even be watching the stream right now because I told her that I'll be oh, on. Cool. cool. That's awesome. So, uh, sorry, keep going. This, this is very interesting. I remember when you kind of came on the scene, but uh, keep going. This is very interesting. Um, yeah. So I guess around that same time, what working on Rick and Morty, um, I was just kind of coming into the whole, I guess you would call it the red pill phase. Mm -hmm. So I was starting to kind of question some narratives because what I seen in the studio was everyone coming in one day just like in tears, like quite literally in tears over Trump's election. Right. So uh, I was just like thinking, like, I don't really see what the big issue here. So I just started kind of looking at things and that's what led me to, you know, your, your typical um, people like Ben Shapiro, Steven Crowder. And that's where I actually first seen Owen was he was on Steven Crowder. It's funny. You and then I needed uh, Ben Shapiro just joined the chat a little while ago. So sorry. Hi, ben. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. That was uh, Ben Vilpana. He's uh Taylor bear. Wrong Ben. So was that, was that in Canada? Yeah, that was in Canada. That was in uh, so, Kelowna, BC. Well, so that's know, about why, why the Canadians care who the, it's so funny. I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so was it Clone is like maybe about a four and a half hour drive outside of Vancouver. Yeah. And what they had was they have a studio in Vancouver that was taking on the bulk of the work for Rick and Morty. Then they had a satellite studio just five hours away where they had about maybe 12, 18 animators just kind of working on different stuff. Maybe just take out little side bits of the show. And that's where I was. Interesting. So the Simpsons were um, made in Korea, weren't they? Um, yeah, the majority of the animation is usually done in Korea. But, you know, things like storyboards, uh, script writing, um, the main production, everything like overseeing like uh, the actual like uh, meat potatoes of the show is where it gets done, usually in L.A. or New York, places like that. Then they'll just ship it off 
to North, um, Korea to get just animated for pennies on the dollar. So how did Canada get the gig for uh, Rick and Morty? Well, well, I guess things have started changing over the years. Like when I was in school, they would tell us how animation would get shipped over and they'd have to do it in Xerox boxes because everything was on paper at the time. So everything had to be carefully numbered and organized. And yeah, if uh, one box got lost, then basically your whole production is delayed. But things started changing with the advent of internet and also with the uh, tax credit system that was introduced in British Columbia. Yeah. So studios could just save like easily just 10% on a whole production, which could mean millions of dollars. And so then it just became very, uh, a very big incentive for many studios to start um, opening up shop in Vancouver. New Mexico has the same story. Um, we give millions and millions of dollars to uh, in tax breaks and other incentives to filmmakers to come make their stuff here. You yeah. might have heard the story that Breaking Bad was um, written yeah. to be, it was written to be done in Sacramento or some piece of shit. I'm not saying Sacramento is a piece of shit, but it was, it was actually, the story was set in a, in a meth town in Southern California. And when they looked at the budget to do it, cause they were actually going to do it in that town. I forget the name of the city. They looked at the budget and it was just, crazy and albuquerque was just begging them and as it turned out um cranston and uh, gilligan whatever his name is the writer the main the main dude mm -hmm. they He's both the x files i think that's right that's right um they both said in many interviews afterward that they were they felt blessed that it got brought to albuquerque because albuquerque really became a a uh a character in the show they really mm -hmm. started to write to the quirks and the oddities a lot of which owen has talked about so not to sidetrack it with albuquerque but i'm just echoing what you're saying about um, tax incentives to to get the film work and that also happened not just in british columbia but also started happening in uh ontario and i think it was nova scotia and also i think now they just recently introduced them in alberta which is where they're filming yellowstone so that was right. a very big very big deal for them sure yeah. Uh, cool. All right. So when did you first, uh, what was your first animation for Owen? First animation for Owen? Oh, well, um, I guess, yeah, I was kind of like trying to make, um, I think what it was, I think it was, uh, oh yeah, it was Wizardry 101. Uh, and uh, that's uh, where I had the bear just kind of on the tree stump. I was trying to imagine like a news segment and he was kind of listing off all the different psyops that were going on at the time. And, you know, we're seeing like the riots down in um, the States. And then this is all during all the whole COVID spell and the um, George Floyd. And so I thought this might be kind of fun, just him kind of listing off the different nonsense that's going on. But of course, my my habit is to make things a lot bigger and then the way I initially imagined them. So I started working on it and I realized, okay, this is actually taking a lot of work and then it's just taking months. And then I just be like, you know, I should just release this right now just so people can see what I've been doing. But uh, on top of that, um, while I was working on it, I was starting to kind of get that whole, so this is America kind of um, feeling. And even though I'm in Canada, I was kind of getting that same sensation in my mind. I was thinking like, this is kind of sounding whiny a little bit. Like, look at all the problems that um, that's going on. And that's kind of the general focus of the cartoon. So it actually became less funny in my mind. <laughs> but so I just kind of gave up halfway through it. Yeah, it's funny how that stuff that's the thing about owen you know anybody that's trying to make content based on stuff that he says you've got to move really quickly yeah. i mean obviously yeah. in case you're used to working on a pretty long timeline but he the the topics change so rapidly uh it's it's pretty crazy how many times people have made things and three weeks like three weeks will have gone by and people barely remember what the thing was three weeks ago because it's moving so fast mm -hmm. and i think that's actually one of the uh awesome things about owen stream is that he likes to re um reuse the same jokes but then just kind of uh, make little adjustments and just kind of work on the same premise and then right. he kind of builds the theme out of it and then the bears on top of that will just kind of like make little inside jokes of it through the, the comments and then some of these jokes actually really have like a lot of staying power. So that's what's been really special with this community. Like some things that we just find funny and they've been funny for years. Right. Yesterday, <laughs> toward the end, after he got the hat, did you, did you see the, did you see the end of yesterday? Yeah, the, uh, was it the goat herder hat? <laughs> when he started talking about symmetry and he started like doing this, he was like, he was on a roll. It was one of the funniest bits of visual comedy 
that I've seen ever. And it was just, he just started getting looser and looser and, and weirder and funnier. It, when he, when he just starts getting in a flow, it's, it's crazy. Like, it's just crazy to watch. It's, it's great. Um, I guess uh, one of the cartoons I've been working on right now is the whole Davos convention. And uh, that one's still a work in progress. But when I was listening to it in the truck at work, he just like, I guess because he wasn't getting enough mail that day. So he just went on a big rant that day. And I was just, I was in tears laughing. I, I couldn't yeah. stop because it was a long drive to where I had to go for my destination work. It's a three hour drive just there and back. So I just had nothing but um, to do but listen to Owen that whole morning. So yeah, that happened to be the one we chose. And he was on fire that day. I was laughing so hard. I thought, okay, this has to be the next cartoon just because he gets into that uh, free flow state where he's just kind of like, should, yeah. We should start a secret campaign and all message each other and just all agree to stop sending letters because he's way funnier when he doesn't get letters. <laughs> yeah, and just do it right before uh, Memorial Day or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, he's he's funny all the time, but I, when he's angstful, when he's angsty, I don't know what the word is. He's he hits us. Yeah, he's he hits a certain thing. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> it was cool. All of this. Yeah. Whereas that one actually had a lot of good joke premises in it. Like he starts off like he's upset that he doesn't have the mail coming in. Then he goes into the moon landing nonsense. And then he starts poking fun at Davos convention, the flute lady, and just yeah. the rants and that alone were priceless. And then it moves into a bit of um, Ira and the Catholics. And then after that, he turns into the bath versus shower debate, which I was just like, man, it's got everything in this one stream. So yeah, here I am trying to think, figure out how I can incorporate all those jokes into this one cartoon, which... I got a little bit on the flute lady, but I know I was going to be building it up to all this other stuff where he's just so frustrated with her that he just says like, you know what, I'm going to go home and take a bath. And somebody in the comments is starting to ma like make fun of him for that, which then he's got some comebacks. And then, yeah, I just thought this would be a really good one. Yeah, it was. It was great. Uh, do you ever contact him and ask him to give you any uh, vocal redos? I haven't asked him personally for any uh, vocals, but you know what? The Speaking of that, there's actually a couple lines I do want him to do for that cartoon, just because uh, in the, uh, was it when I was chopping up some of the dialogue, he says, I'm just going to go home and I'm, I'm going to go work out or something. And I thought, oh, if he just says, I'm going to go home and take a bath, then I can make a segue into a uh, barricade garage. Like I was going to actually take some audio from his stream about him, like uh, responding to Owen's bath versus shower debate. And I was going to have yeah. the both audios playing back and forth where he, now he's insulting him and then cuts to his dialogue. And I was going to make a character based on barricade. And I thought this would be really funny. Then throw a Pope char character in the middle, then maybe just get Owen to be like, uh, shut up, John Paul, the 69th. <laughs> That's cool. I'm, I'm the total opposite of you. I made a video of the flute lady and all I did was, record it off wherever you know I, I have programs so i had it playing on one phone and i just did my own um audio like scatting with my voice and i just put it out and it was probably within a couple days and you know the quality was it was it was really trashy and horrible but for you know but i that's my my forte so everybody that wants to see it can go back. It's still on my timeline. You just got to go back to whenever that was. It's still, I think it's still, I don't take stuff down. I very rarely take it down. That's we have one of the things I actually really enjoy is uh, when I end up uh, falling behind some of the streams, you got guys like Dave Walker Bear always just chopping up some parts of the stream and just always like just keep you on top of that. So I'm able to catch some of the highlights of the stream. Right. Yeah. The, the, the number of people doing um, rehashes and clips and all that, it's, it's awesome. I'm really glad they started that uh, bear content group over Telegram. It got yeah. off to a start because some people didn't understand the nature of it. And uh, people started turning it into, I'm not going to mention any names, but uh, certain people were just turning it into another chat room. And finally, both Papa Jay and Cod kind of came in and defined, this is what this is for. And they pinned it yeah. and stuff. So people finally started understanding. Um, we have a question here for you. I hope it's for you. Sure. Only the host can see the questions. Sam Wise Bear says, do you think he'll ever write or finish writing the Synep cartoon movie? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. I, I've been wondering that myself. 
Um, you know, it's interesting about that one because that's one where I personally contacted Owen um, just saying, hey, you know, I heard you're working on the Synap cartoon. If you ever need help, uh, if you're, you know, planning on uh, looking for animators, I'm here to help you with anything you got. And uh, cool. he was pretty cool. stoked about that. But he also told me it's a long way off because the writing process takes a long time. And he's had a lot of things going on in life, too. So, you know, fair enough. But uh, interesting about that was... Um, I randomly got a message from him saying, hey, what's your email? So I thought, okay, you know, sure, and just stay in contact. And uh, then I got an email from Vox. And turns, out he was was trying, turns out he was trying to sell you crypto. <laughs> yeah. He only, what was it, bear he coin? only sent those out to people very, very highly esteemed, such as yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was really funny. Um, Sorry. Yeah. I, I keep going. I, this is just I guess, yeah, so the box just contacted me out of the blue. He said, hey, John, I heard uh, you're willing to do some um, cartoons. Uh, can I get your phone number? And I just started my pipeline job out here, so I didn't know what to expect. And he said, what's a good time to call you? And then I said, um, I guess you can just call me anytime because the job was kind of slow to start. I wasn't doing a whole lot of labor, mostly just sitting around the truck a lot. So, yeah, then I just got a random call from Italy. And, yeah, so I had a call with him. And that was pretty interesting because, like, he talked just exactly how he does in the stream. So I thought it was really, really interesting just to kind of listen to him in the person, um, you know, over the phone. If I got a call like that, I would just hang up. I'd say, fuck you, Van Dutch. And I would hang up because I would have just assumed that. <laughs> punk. But I got a question because you mentioned he sounded the same on the phone as he does on his. Do you, Absolutely. you remember? The, you're the only person in the world that I want to ask this question to, but I've had this question going in my mind for a long time. Doesn't he sound like Mr. Peabody from the old cartoons when he talks? Oh, my goodness. Mr. Peabody. Yeah, of... uh, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Well, maybe I, sh <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have assumed you go back as far as, because those are those were mid-60s, you know, Mr. Peabody. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's yeah, it pretty funny uh, i mean um yeah i mean yeah he had such, that dry sense of humor so when i was discussing ideas with him about like for the cartoon that he wanted um he wanted to do like a saturday night live type segment that involved one of his uh, dark lord characters yeah. just kind of keeping on top of current events much the same way he does with his blogs and everything and he said i can basically write these things out within 15 minutes um but then he wanted to figure out a timeline that i could be able to pump out these cartoons as well and so i gave him a test one and he was really impressed with it I of course then, i remember him saying that on yeah a, i remember him saying that on a dark stream yeah the only problem was and because i thought i would have all his time for it but then work really started to pick up and then i just found myself unable to commit to it unfortunately but um on the plus side I, this job doesn't last forever um pipeline jobs usually tend to last for about like four months this one in particular is about an 11 month job so by the end of august i should be done everything then i have savings and i can just kind of relax and i can go back and you know hopefully I, if he's okay with it uh we can maybe try and give another stay another shot yeah yeah he's i he's a weird uh i i don't want to guess what he's gonna do but i know that uh he loves to collaborate mm -hmm. and i know that he likes your work so i hope he grants you some grace because when other if, if you explain the situation to him i hope he understands because mm -hmm. there are people who have um not delivered that he has gotten frustrated with but i don't think you're going to fall into well, that category he didn't follow up with me on like you know so what's going on are you making more cartoons um because i did actually explain in one of the emails that we're having back and forth that just so you know i'm working six days a week 12 hours a day and i get extremely limited time, probably like a couple hours max in the evening to work on this and then i think yeah so i i, I let him know that right away what but uh exactly who knows uh if um this is kind of like a one shot opportunity and it's already passed. And if that is the case, then, you know, it's okay. I'll just I keep don't, making I it. Actually, I don't, I don't see it going that way. I think something's going to happen there. Mm -hmm. I, I think he wanted I, to experiment with this anyway. And I already had some ideas cause he was already trying to picture like a theme song. And I contacted uh, Devin, a uh, flyboard bear. Say, hey, can we come up with something kind of metal yeah. sounding? Because I think that's what Vox would like. Yeah. It's something very metal, very quick, seven seconds long. That just kind of flashes the title. And there we go. We're into the cartoon. Like, it definitely can't be longer than like seven seconds. Because then the audience is already going to lose interest. Devin is, uh, I've been impressed with that guy since the first time I heard him. And, uh, 
I wanted to come down and play at the festival, but I don't think, you know, it's, it's a long way and everything. I don't know, but, uh, yeah, I, it's a, uh, Blood Bear mentions a 33 hour box. drive. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Bad Dutch is trying to crack me up for some reason. Bud Bear, Bud Bear mentioned that the uh, intro music to the Dark Stream is really good, and I think that's some of his his. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who did that music, but it's not Devin. Mm -hmm. But uh, Devin's Devin's incredible. I, I think I think um, Vox would really like his music as well. So I think you guys are mm -hmm. destined to to do something there. Well, Devin. But also, like, when we first started talking, um, because I became more aware of him through uh, the BC Bears chat on Telegram, and yeah. then I guess he uh, contacted me randomly, he just said, hey, if you need any music for your cartoons, you know, I'm willing to collaborate. And then, um, yeah, so we ended up talking, and he provided me a Gary and Terry uh, theme song, yeah. which was just amazing. Yeah. Um, I haven't even finished the cartoon for that, but it's only, like, 20 seconds long, and it's just the one of the most funniest, catchiest, like, theme songs. And then, yeah, I was just amazed with his music quality. And I thought, and he's, like, asking, like, what kind of instruments do we use for this? And I said, you should use a xylophone because it sounds extra gay. <laughs> and then, yeah, he adds xylophone. like, this is perfect. There's people, some people are saying some shit about me in the chat, and I just have to say in advance, fuck you, whoever, whatever, it's all bullshit. Whatever they're saying, it's bullshit. Um, I don't even, whatever. Um, I think we might, hold on a second. I, we wanted to wait a little bit, but I might have to get the mystery guest on. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, something, something went wrong here. Sorry about the mess up. Yeah, no worries. Okay, our special guest. All right, all right, you made it. This is this is. A, uh, are you are you muted? Are you muted? I'm getting it. All right, all right. The, the bar king, king himself. himself. Uh, check, uh, your, check your oh and check, check your yeah uh, uh, try can you what what uh, I don't think uh, I don't think this is going very well I don't I don't if, if, he's, he's, if he his, can't get his if he can't get if his he can't get his together, shit together you know <laughs> you know. Okay, that that didn't work out. Sorry about that. No worries. I guess uh, you'll try again. Maybe things will work out. Well, actually, uh, we had two mystery guests, and that one I wasn't even sure if it was going to work out. And obviously, Owen doesn't know how to, you know, join a live stream. So, fuck that. He needs the gong and everything. Then he needs Coddington just to show up and make everything work, and we're ready to go. Okay. Okay, so I really sorry about the the derail. I, yeah. um, that was uh, yeah, exactly God's worth. <laughs> I um I wanted to ask you because this was an amazing to me an amazing transition that you made because you were, you know, working in front of a computer screen, and you know being a, being a cartoon guy, and you decided you wanted to join the real world and go get a real like a man job, and I just thought that was awesome. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, I guess um. Yeah, I was doing animation for 11 years. And then I guess the recent shows that I was working on after uh, Rick and Morty. So was it after that show? I worked on a, a show that's based off a popular Canadian sitcom called Corner Gas. And I did uh, the four seasons of that before eventually they canceled the show. But it's actually Canada's top rated cartoon. And I had a good time working on that one. So it was a good experience. But then after that, the kind of work I was left finding was anything like basically the company logo was, you know, your rainbow and everything like this is all we're about is equality and everything. So I thought, well, it's just a job. It'll last for a few months. Then I realized the stuff I was working on is just stuff. I just, it doesn't appeal to me just from a moral standpoint. And then as an animator, I guess like, okay, so some of the animation is nice and all, but I didn't like being in that world. I just knew I didn't fit. And on top of that, the money was just kind of hanging, make me hang on. And, uh, 
I was getting kind of cabin fever from being in front of the computer a lot. So everything was just kind of building up to that point. And then I remember uh, helping my brother and sister who both work on the pipeline. They've been doing it for quite a few years. I went to go help them just move some things out of their mini storage. And then I just saw all these things that they had, like had like this nice dinette set, these, these couches. And I thought like, how much do you guys make per week? And Ash was like, oh man, we make like 3000 a week. I'm like, sign me up. Why not? <laughs> Well, he's frozen again. Hope he comes back. Welcome, Finks. We got a lot of legends in here. The personal farmers here. I hope uh, hometown can come back. He gave away his real name a little while ago. Hope you all caught it. I made a funny face when he said his real name. Okay, I don't know if he'll probably just try to rejoin like he did last time. So, all right, he'll come, come back. I think he'll come back. MJ Corum's here. Yeah, all right. I'm just going to read. He did. I also caught it. Animators cramped up during hometown, drawing hometown bear. Oh, that's hilarious. Copper's here. Copper tree bear. Oh, no. Copper tree bear. That's a different copper. Cool. Sunflower mama's here. Some of my poppies here. All right. When do you not make a funny face? I don't know. Joe, show us your six amps. Ta-da! I need. No, I don't need a Coddington. I am my own. I'm my own Coddington. Bud Bear says, "God bless the bears." That's awesome. <laughs> Bad Dutch talking about Pontiac. <laughs> I can't even say what it is. Time for a solo. Down, 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 down. <laughs> Uh, did someone say copper? That's funny. Hey, I got a story about copper. Well, I, I can't tell it right now. I hope he comes back in. He's got, he must have Canadian internet. Four mamas here. Mr. Nargus. I don't know how you say your name. Mr. Nargus. Good to see you. B12. KGS18, ISS, uh, uh, Sleepy House is here. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry, I'm um, Wi Fi spotty in this basement suite. Supposedly it's high speed internet. It's actually good, but for some reason it always ca cancels out with me. It happens a lot too when I'm talking with Wobbly Bear. So I have to switch into the data. Uh, well, whatever it takes, we just uh, we just stick with it. We've learned how to roll with it, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So you I were in the middle of saying, the saying that you there. how you found the uh, the pipe field people, the pipe. What do you call it? The pipeline people. The, um, yeah. Yeah. So I guess for this particular spread, it's uh, Midwest Pipeline, and they have. Um, it's part of a bigger project called Trans Mountain Pipeline. So they're trying to get a pipe going from Edmonton all the way down to the coast in Vancouver. And of yeah. course, it's got to cross to the Rockies. And then there's a lot of remote territory that it's got to pass through. And I guess this project's been going on for over five years. And I'm just coming on to the tail end of it on the uh, Edmonton spread. So this is one of the biggest ones uh, they have right now, which goes from Ed This is going to keep happening we'll we'll just keep trying it we'll just keep doing it sleepy house said i was vamping sats bear says ethernet gary dm'd you a solution i hope he comes back because we we have the special guest coming in very soon another special another you know like the other mystery special guest And we're back. All right. <laughs> Hopefully this right. uh, stays. Thanks for being patient with me on this anyway. But um, yeah, so I guess that's what I was saying before. Uh, this one spread that I'm working on goes from Edmonton to a smaller town called Edson, which is about two hours away. So that's a lot of kilometers. There's a lot of different roads we have to go check on. And I'm part of an environmental deficiency group, which we just go in, we put up uh, wing walls with uh, geofencing. So we just put like some filter over, keep sediment from rolling off the, uh, I guess they call it the right of way where they put, lay down the pipeline. 
right. and I guess when it starts raining, all that uh, loose dirt and everything turns into sediment and it'll roll into people's properties, which can cause environmental issues. Uh, and on top of that, they have to watch for migrating birds, toads, anything like that. So the environmental side of things is incredibly strict. Yeah, that's funny. I have mixed feelings about that because, uh, you know, being a, a home builder, we always had to um, pay attention to, you know, I built in a lot of different parts of town. And uh, when we get rain here, it can really cause a lot of erosion. So everyone's responsible for containing their own water that falls on their property. Mm -hmm. And if somebody fails to do that, they could do, you know, $50,000 worth of damage to their neighbor downhill. Exactly. And so lost exactly. and stuff. So there's a way, there's, in a way, I, I respect the um, effort to try to mitigate those problems from, exactly. from where you The other side of me is always just very skeptical about all the environmental stuff. So I have to kind of like balance all that out. Well, they'll literally shut us like down, like just if they actually find, uh, was it uh, bank swallows? So I guess like along the side of the right away, they got lots of piles of topsoil and they love to like burrow in anything that's on an angle. But if it's on too much of an angle, then they can't really build a nest in it because they'll just cave right in. So if it's like a lot more vertical, they'll definitely start burrowing hole holes into there. And once you start spying them, you have to start laying down coconut matting and everything just to kind of keep them from just just long enough so they can actually get in there and do a what would they call it? They just they clean up the whole area and they do like a complete reclaiming, make right. it look like was uh the way it was before they put in the pipelines interesting yeah well i've i saw so many um environmentalist um causes be used for political aim my skepticism is just really high on mm -hmm. all that stuff uh, species go extinct all the time it's not like humans have this magical i don't know it's i don't know, i'm I, I probably go too far to the side of the anti-environmentalists but I think a lot of the guys like me that are that came up, you know, in a, grew up in a rural setting and we grew, grew up with, you know, ranching and, and gardens and orchards, we already have all that respect. I think that makes us even more um, pissed off when we hear people misusing environmentalism for political because mm -hmm. we have a much more direct connection to what God intends for us taking care of, of the soil and, and, and the animals and the the birds and the babies and that's right um yeah i don't actually know exactly what kind of um you know full extent they um are misusing the environmental side of things but i guess you know some people are just kind of given like a clipboard and a job and basically as long as they're check marking like okay yeah the birds are okay these ones are all fine you know you guys can continue working so it seems like there's a lot of like uh money just kind of flowing into things that don't really make a big difference but on one hand i guess you know if there's certain it's it's interesting there's like certain species of frogs that they will completely shut down a pipeline for but then there's other ones they don't care about so yeah, i and i kind and of I, over my head but yeah i also feel like i've come to a new um place in life where i just try to see the good in everything so if there is a bunch of uh, crazy jobs being cr created because of environmentalism, I have to look at the good side and say, wow, a bunch of people have jobs. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I guess, and as far as me, like, as far as I'm concerned, um, if it rains, that's basically work falling out of the sky. Cause right now we've been, uh, we finished working on all these different roads and it's getting to the point where all of our uh, corrective actions lists were starting to dry up and we're wondering, well, oh, I guess we're going to get sent home any day now. I was kind of stressing about that a little bit because I wanted to hit a goal by the, um, the end of August. I didn't want to get sent home. Say this is the last week. We're all talking about this. But then we got three days of just tons of rain. And that was basically work falling out of the sky. Like, okay, now let's go check on all these roads again. And sure enough, there's sediment. There's areas flooding. And we're like, okay, so now let's get to work. So we just put on our gum boots and go walk in the tall mud and start shoving out some all kinds of stuff and just to – keep it from spilling to another property and yeah flood board bear had a question for you uh devin wanted to know what happened with the truck getting stuck in the mud uh the truck getting stuck in mud oh that's happened a few times yeah. <laughs> i just wanted to know if you got it out oh yeah definitely 
Actually, I think there was one day I posted in my Instagram stories there. Uh, I was using a side-by-side, -side, so I guess they were going to start doing some seeding. They finished reclaiming an entire right-of-way, and they're going to start laying down some seeds and do some harrowing. But then I guess my job was to just come in and start picking up some debris, like large chunks of uh, like trees and – or I mean, like yeah, tree branches and rocks, things like that. I, Anything that's kind of caught. In, I didn't know they allowed harrowing on those job sites. Uh, uh, it's one of the very last steps, yeah. Her, 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 I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll just. I was, I was making it, it flies right over my head sometimes. Like, oh, you made a joke. <laughs> Van Dutch is never going to let me live this down. <laughs> I, I'll promise to be really, really like above board the rest of the whole episode. I promise. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, it's funny like yeah it's like these jokes like just like fly over my head like oh wait he was actually making like a funny there but then yeah like all day long i'm just hearing chirping and banter from my crew members and so like you kind of have to have some thick skin when you're working on that um that crew for sure like my uh straw boss uh art he's an old indian guy and all day long he's chirping at you right he's always got something to say with every little action you do so you gotta like He's made some people cry from what I've heard through the stories, <laughs> but you know, in me, I just keep laughing it off. Like he's called me fat ass. He's called me the, what was it? He started calling me Johnny cakes. And then now he's calling me the big uke. And I thought like, what do you mean by the big uke? He says, you're Ukrainian, right? I'm like, no, I'm a Dutchman. So then he's just like, oh, okay. So he started looking up my last name and then he found out the origin was from South Africa. And then he's just like, oh, you got a black guy's name. So how's it feel to be a black man? It was a fat ass and everything. I'm just, <laughs> and all I do, I just can't help but laugh at everything he says. Sounds like he's a <laughs> legend. Oh, he is. He's a funny guy, but you know, some days he can be a little hard to work with just because it's like, okay, Art, like, I get it. <laughs> Let's just get to work. I wished I had been uh, keeping a journal of all the sayings from the job sites, like in the 80s and back, you know, because there were these, we had these crazy, um, these two brothers from they didn't look at all alike but they said they were brothers from oklahoma that were tile setters and james petty the the really good tile setter a fantastic tile man from the old you know old school and he smoked a lot of cigarettes and he would talk real deep voice yeah. and slow yeah you know and we, we'd like spend a bunch of time laying out you know like how we were going to do the countertops or something because i was the superintendent and then we'd get it all figured out he'd go well if that don't work out will always think it should have <laughs> but it always yeah down. exactly you know you gotta actually respect some of these old turns that have been on the job for a while and i think for him he's just he's past age of retirement and uh he's just doing like one last gig so he says but you know he always seems to get called back i think it's because his also his wife uh works in the uh, the office on the uh, the payroll side of things so when she's working he doesn't want to be home alone so he'll just come out and work which is really respectable of him. And uh, I seem to be on his good side for the most part because I work really hard out there and I just don't really, I don't have much to say other than I just want to just grab me a shovel and then just get to work. But, you know, everyone else seems to have a little bit of attitude with him and that always fires him up. So then you always hear him like going off to somebody else. And, <laughs> That's hilarious. and uh, he has a funny thing. He's always calling everybody George. Everyone's name is George on the site that's a good one yeah yeah there used to be a lot of jokes in the 80s that i can't repeat because they're they were just too vile but uh, we have another question from ukrainian bear yeah did hometown learn construction prior to his artsy farah career i think he meant to say artsy fartsy career <laughs> um actually uh before i started um my I guess it wasn't my first job, but probably more like my third job in animation. Um, I did actually go and help construct houses in Saskatchewan. I helped uh, my friend and my brother-in-law work on some duplexes. And this is in the middle of the winter when it was like minus 40. And because work was kind of slow for me anyway. And I wanted to uh, save up and buy a Cintiq, which is basically just a giant monitor that you can just draw on. Oh, and right. it's a lot nicer than using the, the price. On, I remember the price on those was crazy, like 20 years ago. I don't know when this was, but yeah, the, the good ones were, were pricey because I, yeah. I used to price them because I, I was doing a lot of car design back in those days. Okay. Uh, yeah, like and, uh, this one was like over $2,000, and I think they're still basically that price. And oh. I have the same one from back then from 2013. It's still going. It, they're wow. very high quality. That's great. I don't know the one you're referring to, but I'm sure if you like it, it's great. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah, it's definitely been very, uh, very reliable. I mean, I've used it almost every day since I've had it. So wow. it definitely it speaks to its quality. But um, yeah, it's um, one of the best $2,000 I've spent because it helped launch my career. And I'm able to not only work in a studio, but I can also take stuff home and work on it there if I just want to put in some extra hours. Right. Yeah. But yeah, the interesting Interestingly enough, the, it took me construction to actually kind of get a, a startup in animation. Cool. So that's probably one of the reasons why I also wanted to work in pipelining, too, is because after I just had enough of being in front of the computer, I thought, you know what, I kind of missed that. Just all the banter we're giving each other each day. It's long, hard days. It's cold out. And... But you make good money, and then you work. You come home, you're satisfied, and you, you know, you got some savings, and then you can just work on your own thing. And that's what my right. brother was telling me. He says, you know what, you shouldn't be working on these uh, shows. Which um, the one I was working on at the time is this uh, preschool show about squirrels. And of course, the premise they're saying we're all about want to teach equality and diversity, and you know all this stuff. And I thought, so this is called genderless squirrels, right? <laughs> Um, I didn't like it, but, uh, you know, I just kind of pushed through it. Did you say that until it was done. Out people in the office? Actually, no, I was working remotely. Okay. That's yeah. So I probably had to keep a lot of thoughts to myself. <laughs> right. But yeah, my, my little inside joke with it, cause the show was called unlimited squirrels and I called it genderless squirrels, but, that's uh, <laughs> well, that's, I think that's really cool that you had that insight and that, not only, you know, being a bear and being into Owen, but I think a lot of us were kind of headed that way in our lives anyway. I think a lot of when bears talk about, oh, I've, I found my people or, you know, all that stuff. I think it's because we were all seeing th things didn't make sense in the major media. And mm -hmm. we knew we weren't alone, but we we really didn't know that many people that thought like us. So that's I think that's one of the most beautiful aspects of the bears is we finally all found each other sort of. And I think that was really important, especially at the time when I started questioning a lot more narratives. And uh, I guess I've, I've now come to a point where I'm a lot more at peace with it. I just want to see the funny angle of things. I don't actually care about uh, uncovering the deep truths of all these narratives. Like just when Owen was mentioning about the submarine uh, incident, it's just, it doesn't really matter. We can find an esoteric connection. We can actually find like uh, a deeper connection to like... Um, you know, if it's a distraction, you know, if you go on Gab, right, these people are all fired up over it. And there was a time where I was checking Gab every day, like, oh, yeah, these guys are really, really on the pulse of everything. And now when I scroll by it, I almost want to roll my eyes. I'm thinking, like, these guys are just caught into the trap, just like everybody else, too. It's yeah. actually quite amazing to see now. Yeah. Uh, it's It's just amazing what happens when you stop living your life as if what's on the news m means anything it's, it's just a it's just a miracle it's a miracle when you actually it took me you know years and years and years and it, and it's it's a miracle when when it, when you finally really do it mm -hmm. and I think yeah one of the benefits of just being able to work outside every day is you just don't have time to think about that stuff anymore right. um Every now and then, it, these things do come up. Like, if we've ever mentioned COVID, I actually do bring up a couple of, like, uh, points that a lot of people were even thinking about, like um, the whole purposeful crashing of the financial system, things I've learned on Owen Stream. So when I bring this up, everyone's like, huh, I was just thinking it was, like, something from China, you know, that they were covering up. Like, no, no, it's all got to do with supply chains. And I've been trying to push the idea of, like, growing within your community, knowing a neighbor within 10 miles, 10 people within 10 miles, and uh, all that sudden they're like, that's right. That's exactly what I want to do. And it's just like, yeah, it just clicks with a lot of these guys out there. And I think yeah, that's cool. they can appreciate just a, a refreshing angle from it. Yeah, this has been coming up on a lot of Hanging with Bears. Um, it seems like we all are kind of evolving very um, simultaneously. We're all kind of discovering the same stuff. You know, we're, we're listening to Owen, but there's all this stuff that's going on in our daily lives. Like you said, you're connecting with nature because you're out there every day. Um, when you start living outside of worrying about things, you start to speak differently to the people that you run into in your daily life. I, I found that I can actually bring up the idea to boomers that we didn't go to the moon. And I'm so like not invested in it. I'm so relaxed and sort of comical about it that yeah. they actually don't freak out. They actually stand back and go, and we actually have a, I've had some incredible conversations with people, even uh, 
a guy who uh, works on my amps worked for the um, the um, radar, supposedly the LIDAR and the radar for the uh, the Mars lunar landers and stuff. Okay. Uh, he worked at Sandia Labs here. And to, to be able to say to a guy like that, you know, in his garage, I don't think we went. And to have him go, that's interesting. You know, like to actually have a conversation. The kind of angry guy that I was five years ago, I never could have had that conversation. I, I wouldn't have been. Because I guess as Owen was saying, it's like, it's not like everybody's all in on this whole thing. There's some people are just going out doing their job. They're doing what they're um, trained to do, but they're just, you know, they don't actually want to piece all these things together until you bring in a really unique angle. And then, yeah, it's just like, because also it, it depends on their personality too. Um, yeah. Well, all... this was really, because he, he wanted to know why I thought that. And I hit all the major points, but again, I kept it, I kept it light. I didn't, you know, I it wasn't like, you know, you need to know this or anything. It was just kind of like bringing up things in a sort of joking way. And he said, it's funny you mentioned compartmentalization because they would send me to New York to meet with these guys that were supposedly the, the overseers of our technology. And it was tied into a, a, a university, one of the colleges in New York. And he said, they were all so secretive and they were all so um, uh, sort of like you could catch the vibe that they were pissed off that he was sent there to interact with them. He said he couldn't even really get them to like work with him. So he, in a weird way, you could see him kind of like thinking through this compartmentalization thing. Uh, oh, Calis is asking me if I could bring my sound up a tad. I just probably have to. Oh, let me try re repositioning this. Um, sorry about that, Calista. Thank you for the feedback. Um, so it was really fun to have that conversation because he had some real world experience of the compartmentalization. Right. Um, and yeah, I think uh, just the, once you just find someone who can just kind of break through all that, but not uh, try and give them like the, the wake rate kind of thing, you know, like actually try and yeah, you have to understand this. You have to know this is all fake. Just planting some seeds like you know if you actually want to accept this information go right for it right but some people might be like oh that's interesting never thought about it and they might even just go about their day and just forget that conversation even happened but for some people who like to question certain things maybe it's just enough for them to actually start seeing things differently yeah and, and a lot of people have said this but it's it's really in uh you actually radiate something. When you have peace mm -hmm. within yourself, you're actually radiating something that's inviting to people. And I see more and more bears um, kind of embodying that. It's awesome. I think it's also really cool that how Owen brings up uh, some of the, um, the knowledge that he's learned from people he knows has been in the military. So when yeah. he brought up about the submarine again, he's like saying like, oh yeah, these things will actually compress and they go further down the pressure. They're using a certain type of uh, reconstructed steel that can handle the uh, fluctuations in temperature. But then, yeah, so all that kind of stuff, like that's new to sure. me. And it's just, um, I find that really, really um, interesting to think about. Like, I don't know what this, um, the narrative can mean after that, but it's just really fun to think that, okay, these things weren't even designed to do what they're doing. Yeah, he's a he's a central clearinghouse for very um, mm -hmm. specific information because of the number of people that that are drawn to this community. It's great. Absolutely. Finksburg Bear says that he wishes I was in the silent generation. I, I take I take so much abuse from these <laughs> bastards. <laughs> this this other thing that makes you a legend in the bears is this epic romance with Wobbly Bear. And so I I know a little, I know more than some people, but I want to hear uh, like how it all occurred for you. Take um, take as long as you like to talk about this. How can I explain this? So I guess it really started happening when uh, the Bertaria Times app um, began. So I just made an account there and uh, I wanted to find something that's very personal to me that I could share. Something that obviously wasn't, um, you know, discussing whatever is going on in Instagram, just something a little bit about myself. And at the time, I was really connecting with my grandpa. He was 97, at the, or no, actually at the time when this connection was really starting to come about was when he was 96. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided that I wanted to uh, go back to church. I said, you know what, I really want to spend this time with my grandpa and said, hey, I know you go to church every Sunday. I'd like to go there with you his eyes just lit right up. Wow. And it wasn't that he was um, 
of I guess disappointed in me in any way. He was just saying like, you know, if you make your choice, so be it, right? But in silence, he was praying for my whole family that we would find our way to Christ again. And he said that was actually one of the most best moments of his life, he said, because he said, I've been praying for this family for 40 years that, hey, you guys would just find your way back somehow. And so, yeah, I started going to church with him and we just started really uh, bonding. And then um, I would take him out to dinner every now and then. And then he started sharing some funny stories with me or some interesting stories. He was talking about when he was in Holland at the time during World War II, when the Germans came over and took over a small town. He was telling me some stories about how they were trying to force the young um, young boys into work camps and just there to build trenches and things like that for when the, I, said, I think he mentioned it was the Battle of the Bulge, they were um, getting all the Dutch boys to build out the trenches and everything. And of course, he was a bit of, um, he, had, he had some attitude, so he would talk back to the German officers. And interestingly enough, he never called them Nazis. He always called them German officers. And uh, he said, yeah, I, went, I never talked him back to, to the one officer. And I said, digging i don't know much about digging i'm not going to really start to learn right now he says you want to get shot <laughs> he said okay he's like you know he's just giving some attitude <laughs> then he said right after that he saw a plane coming down it was covered in flames and it just like tried to make a landing in one of the fields right behind him and then yeah it just kind of dragged along the field and then the pilot they jumped out he's covered in flames he's rolling on the ground and he says give me that shovel right now <laughs> And he said the officer was just laughing really hard because he said, I dug faster than anybody dug on that whole work camp. <laughs> and then there's other times where, um, yeah, he was talking about how, I think this is maybe even earlier, they were driving around trying to pick up boys and put them into the truck so they can put them to work and everything. And he managed to get out of it because he realized they're looking for boys that know how to work because all the Dutch boys are all big, they're strong, they, they know how to do that, right? But uh, yeah. his whole idea was... Um, I'm just going to put on some shorts and ride around a bicycle. I'm, I'm going to dress like a good for nothing. And sure enough, the officers, they, they, <laughs> they just, they, they never bothered. It's like, no, he's a good for nothing. We're not going to put him to work. <laughs> so he, he was a thinker for sure. And uh, yeah, so he had all these interesting stories and he was just so happy to share them with me. And he even told me, he's like, I've never shared these stories with anyone, not even your mom, just because for whatever reason, he was just happy to have a connection with me. Right. And so that started growing and, um, yeah, so I guess about another year went on, and um, I managed to be baptized in that time and uh, just enjoying going to church, taking them up for dinner. But then we had a Christmas dinner, and uh, it was interesting. Okay, so he's been married twice um, when his first wife passed away when he was in his early 70s, and then he got married again when he was 88, and then he lived with her until she passed away when he was 95. And then, so at this Christmas um, dinner, he had another date with him. So he's a real ladies' man, too. And uh, I never drive him home after that Christmas dinner. And he did the whole nice thing. Like, he walked her up to the door. He gave her a kiss goodnight and everything. So I thought, this guy's a real Casanova. But I'm just sitting there in the car, just driving this guy home. And so we just had a really nice connection there. And as I um, drove up to his house, he just said, I love you. And I thought, I don't ever recall him saying that to me. Probably not since I was a little boy. Um, wow. At least now it's the first time I've ever can remember him saying that to me. So uh, it's just amazing the connection I've had with him. But then after that, two weeks later, he got sick and he passed away. And this was uh, just a month right before the COVID um, thing happened. Right. So right. the timing of it, I thought, was also very peculiar because my mom was able to accept it more gracefully. We all thought he was, was going to live to 100 but I think my mom accepted them more gracefully. She didn't blame it on the virus or us being uh, negligent with uh, wearing masks or not wanting to take the vaccine or anything like that. She just knew that his time had come. And right. even he said it himself too. He thought, you know what, John, that's it. My time has come. But I'm just so happy that, mm -hmm. you know, you've found your way back to the Lord and that I think you've become a, a good young man. And I'm really happy for you. Like he that's finally awesome. understood what it meant to be, oh, your career is an animator. You're not just like a starting artist. Like you've actually forged a career out of that. So he was really happy. Like just the direction I've taken in life. Took a little longer, but managed to find my way there. That's a but then, great so, yeah, story. He, he passed That's away and then I, I wanted to share that on the Veritaria Times app. So I wrote out as best as I could. I'm, I'm not the best, uh, I don't have the best word prose, I, I guess you could say. So I explained the story as best as I could. But then Wobbly, she... Uh, replied to it and she said hey that was a beautiful story and so that's i was just like i was kind of new to the bears too i didn't become familiar with all the members yet but then um 
I became interested in her. And so I started messaging her back well, and forth. And just thought, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was just, that was a really nice connection right from the very beginning. And um, yeah, I got to share a little bit about ourselves and she was an artist too. And I was really interested in how she was a mural painter and yeah, it was amazing. The and then we just had the are, similar values. The fact that you guys are both artists, it's just, it's like destiny. Uh, I don't know. I could talk about this for a long time, but I'm just so uh, blessed to, to know both of you as, as well as I do. And I watched it, uh, you know, I knew, you know, not bragging or anything, but I knew before a lot of bears that, you know, that, that you were the one, because she was talking about, oh, I've, I have my betrothed or whatever she called it. And, uh, and people didn't know who it was, but it's, <laughs> it just warms my heart. And it has this whole time. It's just incredible. And um, I guess, and then speaking on that too, I guess we were already, um, yeah, just working on a relationship. And I think this is like the first year we were together. And there's some things I was still uh, working on with myself, which was uh, trying to quit smoking weed. That was a big one for me. Actually, I was a long time pot smoker and I wanted to get out of that habit, but I just wasn't breaking free from it. Just could be all kinds of reasons, mostly excuses. But then she said, you should try out the Legion. I think that would be a good thing for you. And then, yeah, sure enough, I thought this is the right time. I wanted to give this a shot. So then that's how I got to connect with you guys in the chat and everything and actually be held accountable for my actions. And uh, it was a really, really good experience because I got to wake up early. You do a little bit of exercise. You're keeping yourself clean. And I got into reading my Bible again. I was really enjoying everything that month that uh, it was a very, very cleansing period of time. And uh she just said within like just two weeks of me doing it, she said, you, you were already looking different. You exude a different energy. You, um, you're you talking differently and you have more clarity about yourself and you can tell it was working. And so just within that month alone, um, I managed to quit entirely. And now I'm almost 14 months clean. I haven't had a single craving and I'm just so much more happier where I am <laughs> right now. Working hard, That's my debts paid off and everything. And my connection with her has gotten stronger ever since. Yeah, and you got to go over and, and be together with her for the first time physically mm -hmm. last year. So last year? Uh, yeah, that was uh, for Christmas break. So I think was it uh, we had December 18th off to January 2nd. So that was just enough time the where I can go down. Photos visit were, sorry for interrupting. You. The photos were epic. It was, it was like, uh, I don't know, it was just so, oh, it was just great to see all those photos every day when they came out. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to expect when I um, touched down New Zealand because I had an idea like, okay, there's some landscape that's similar to Canada and way, especially uh, British Columbia with the mountains and everything. But the way I explained uh, New Zealand to my dad was um, it looks like they have uh, have the best parts of BC, Ontario with the green rolling hills, the mountains of BC, but then it's got a little touch of tropical in there. At least that was my whole idea of New Zealand, the North Island, just kind of roll that into one. And that's what you got. And it was just a magical place. I just remember a couple of times just driving down the road with her. And I just thought, this place is just incredible. But what I really liked about Napier, her hometown, was it uh, had an element of where I grew up in British Columbia, which is the Okanagan Valley. Lots of vin um, wines, uh, vineyards and everything. And uh, But instead of the lakes, they had the ocean. But just the way the uh, general... Um, landscape looked it just reminded me of home and it, um, i didn't even realize i was twelve thousand kilometers away so i well knew all, that the, all the uh far. all the people in here but especially the women want to know what was it like the first time you actually physically got to be with her hold her and kiss her and all that it was right, right when i got off the plane she was waiting for me um so i connected to the auckland airport and then it just another short flight down to napier which is about a 45 minute flight from there and she was waiting for me and so it was really awesome just like getting off that plane walking up i could see her in the window with her smile and then yeah the very very moment yeah so we just gave each other a hug and a kiss and it was just amazing like like here we wow. are finally in person that's cool samoan poppy thinks i was being inappropriate i i'm just you know people want to know <laughs> Oh no, it's no worries at all. <laughs> even even Callista's given me a hard time. I I am starting to wonder <laughs> if anybody is on my side in this thing. 
Uh, I'm on your side, Joe. <laughs> I guess this might be a great time to uh, announce that our special guest is Wobbly Bear. A lot of people probably figured out. Let's see if she can come on here. I can see her making jokes in the chat. This time it's not a gag like the other time. All right. Here she Hi. is. <laughs> How's it going? We're having Great. a good talk here. It's good to see you here as well. Can you hear me all right? Or do I need my headphones? No, just talk a little louder. OK. I'll get closer. <laughs> OK, so sounds good? Yeah, sounds, sounds great. You've been in the chat. Uh, have you been enjoying yourself in the chat? Yeah, it's fun. I love being cool. in the chat. <laughs> now, now that you're here, can we hear your side of the story on how the relationship started and then developed and blossomed and all that up to up to the current moment? Well, it is it, it is what he said. It was um. Well, I mean, actually, I kind of I was a fan of his cartoons. Obviously, I mean, because they were so good. And, um, but I was pretty anonymous on Instagram. I don't think I'd posted a photo of myself. I'm not sure. Um, but you had gone on hanging with bears. Oh yeah, I had. Yeah. You might want to just talk a little louder, like slightly almost yell. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm gonna, I feel like I'm yelling. So I'll try my headphones. Yeah, try that. Like I already feel like I'm yelling. We'll try anything around here. Is that better? <laughs> we have a we have a, a request from from Bud Bear. He wants you to to both turn to your respective sides and pretend to kiss each other on the screen. No. <laughs> 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 right? Can you hear me now? That's a little better. I can hear you a lot more clearly as well. Okay. It was okay before, okay. But, but I can hear you better as well. Okay. Everyone seems to think it sounds fine, so that's good. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the um, Betaria Times app was just easier to get to know someone without all the memes and the silliness and the racism and stuff. So <laughs> you just um, got to see a bit more of the person and their family life. So um, that's when I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, actually, and Owen shared a photo of um, Hometown once holding his nephew. That's and um, great. That's yeah. Great. Was that your? Uh, uh, that, that also that like, my he's... nephew. That his name is Owen as well. <laughs> was that yeah. your, was that the yeah. first time people had seen what you look like? I think, I think it was. I I think so. Um, I mean, I it was kind of out of the blue that he went and shared it because normally I was just posting memes, but then I just really liked that picture because I was really happy for my sister and she gave birth to this young giant. Like he was a huge baby. <laughs> And I knew that he was going to be a big boy when he grows up. And he is. He's growing pretty fast. But, um, yeah, I was so happy with that picture that I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to share it because life can't be just memes and, uh, you know, racist jokes and everything like that. As much as I find them really funny. Um, can also show a little side of myself on here. Yeah. But then, yeah, Owen just decided to share it. And he said, look at this guy. This is an animator. He could probably beat the crap out of all the other animators. <laughs> it's like, yeah, just cracking jokes. I don't, I didn't, uh, I didn't catch that one, but that's, that's very cool. So keep going, uh, Wobbly. Uh, right. Tell us the whole yeah, yeah. story. Um, the whole story. Well, then we just kept chatting um, and it was always nice and I was always excited to see a message from him. And it was, um, he would always ask me about my work and creative process and stuff. So yeah, it just seemed like he was actually interested and then, and then I don't even know, it just it just happened. Um, it was like summertime here, it was Christmas time, winter there. And um, I was house sitting alone and he just kept messaging me and then it just turned into something. I don't know. That's cool. I remember being on my phone heaps one night and my parents were there and they were like, what are you doing on your phone? And I was like, this is really important. I think <laughs> something's happening here. <laughs> and um, yeah, so. Calista Bear said something that, <laughs> people think is the winning thing i don't know i don't know who knows they're they're off their everybody's off their feed tonight i've missed whatever. what she say I, I don't know they're they're off are they just the abusive 
Is in you or yeah. yeah. So was it, was it one of those things where all of a sudden the sun would come up and you guys were had been like chatting for three four hours or yeah, pretty much yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I just yeah. do like that, that. Yeah. until it's time for me to go to sleep and I guess that being an animator at the time I my sleep schedule was all over the place so I was actually talking to her pretty late and I think at the time our time difference is uh four or five hours so I mean it's yeah. it's only in the middle of the afternoon for her but you know I just like just want to keep talking. That happened. That yeah. happened with Kalena and I also. I, so I know what that feels like. And then, of course, like COVID, so um, there was no way we could meet or travel. Right. I think New Zealand. We were both closed. New Zealand opened first, but for for a long time there, we were both shut down to foreigners. And uh, during the whole time when everything was locked down, I think this is actually early on in the year, um, 2022, uh, I know it's like a news article I stumbled across, which I think there was rumors that they were going to start opening up in phases, which is, okay, we're going to first open up to vaccinated people, then we're going to open up to vaccinated tourists, and then it'll be the unvaccinated sometime in the end of 2022, which I think was October. So then I just kind of held on to that hope saying, you know what, if New Zealand's going to open up allegedly around October, I think that's when you're going to start seeing other countries doing it. So right to, to, to me, that uh, made, made me realize, I think that the narrative was breaking. We've already been about a year, year, year and a half into this whole thing. And I think it was already losing its grip. So I thought, let's just hold on to that hope and that everything's going to go back to normal. I don't think we're going to need airships just yet. We just need patience. <clears throat> well, yeah, it, no, what, no, it, it was a it was a test of your resolve and your commitment to each other because the goalposts kept getting moved and and you had mm -hmm. to just you just had to write it out, resolve yourself to to being there no matter what. Exactly, and it really worked out. I think the timing was perfect because um, starting a new job. Actually, I wasn't even expecting to go into the pipeline job at the time either, up until pretty much um, my sister announced that, hey, there's an opening. So I got full support of Wobbly, and I thought that, you know, with this uh, in mind, I think I can have the money to come down and see you for Christmas because I knew it wasn't going to be a cheap flight. But, you know, when there's a will, there's a way. And so everything just worked out within God's plan. I was going to make a joke about a GoFundMe, but I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> now, we could have resorted to that but uh yeah i guess none of us even thought that was even going to be a thing yet we just just kind of held on and it worked out so i know owen is very excited because you decided you would get wed at the festival and that's going to happen i don't i do we can't really say too much about it because it's all still kind of in the planning but uh Wobbly has been so um, humble about it. Like she doesn't want to be in anybody's way. She doesn't want to be, she's, it's just so cute the way she's, uh, she's been very demure through this whole thing. And uh, it's just, it's very cute, very funny. And, and it shows what a genuine good person she is because she's, she doesn't, she doesn't want to, you know, cause anybody any trouble, but everybody wants to do all this for you. So just, accept it yeah well i mean i just got to remember back when we announced it was um new year's i guess and um we were in the in the live stream and everyone was just so amazing it was really it's emotional a, actually it was overwhelming like, and yeah. uh we posted the picture of the engagement uh with you holding the ring and uh everyone was just like lit up it was just a it was an amazing moment to see within the community everyone was just cheering for us and we thought oh that's really awesome you guys i, I love this community and thank you for all the support and then owen was just like okay you guys want to have a wedding at the bear fest and we're like what yeah. <laughs> like you don't have to do that but wow that's incredible just for even offering that but you know even if he's just doing it as a, as a sign of being generous if it doesn't happen that's okay because we still had our own plans yeah but uh, it was amazing to see the support of all the community. Longbow Bear said, oh, here, I'll get the deer. And then um, 
and was anchor bear offering to do the music and you as well and then yeah everything just started well, clicking together and uh mj quorum also came uh mm -hmm. came to me a long time ago saying he wanted to be involved as well so we have to we have to mention the legend mj also yes i think was yeah, it he uh, like mentioned you. there's a country song he wanted to sing was it uh <laughs> well there's yeah there's uh we still yeah we're working out all the music but uh Mm -hmm. You guys are going to have all the music you ever wanted. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, and you can, uh, Wobbly, you can talk about who's helping you with the flowers and the and the hair and all. I think, because you know, everybody's committed. Well, yeah. Um, I'm going a week early to Kabul in Missouri, which is near where the festival is, to stay with um, Strong uh, Mermaid Bear. Yep. Strong Mermaid. Lisa. So she's, yep. um, yeah, Lisa. So she's my personal trainer. <laughs> Right. And um, we became friends, and um, yeah, so I'm going to go stay with her on her farm, and she's going to do um, the flowers with I think maybe Permie's bear wife. Some other, she's got a cool group of friends. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'm not and a flower guy. But... Lo loaned me some of her stuff I can wear in my hair, and it's yeah, it's just so sweet. I'm so excited. Cool. There are a couple questions that have cropped up. Let's hope they're good. Okay. It might just be outer or abuse again. But. Uh, Cucumber wanted to know, will Bud Bear print for the wedding? He's got a shop ready for anything. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, know what, would, I don't know what would need. <laughs> well, in, in America, let me explain how it works in America. No, what, what happens is, you know, sending out invitations and stuff, but we're, this is a, there's a community where everybody's, uh, you know, digitally connected. So I don't know. I think you might have hmm. been talking about invitations or, or something like that. But Okay. Juju Lecaire says, what is your song? Our song. We don't have no, one. Right? Song for the wedding. <laughs> oh, Kalena's here. She's on, the, she's on the road. So hi, Kalena. That's cool. Everybody say hi to Kalena. Hi, Kalena. <laughs> Bill Razor raise shirts, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting wedding. <laughs> yeah, well, there's already, I mean, Wobbly has uh, one of the craziest senses of humor. She goes way out there, and sometimes you have to ask yourself, wow, is this is this even, a, like, appropriate for a woman to be, I'm not talking about sexually racy, she's just not afraid to say anything, which a lot of times is pretty yeah. crazy. I was holding back on twitter a lot today because i'm not on there a lot i just look at owens but i was scrolling the feed and i was like man the things i want to say are so yeah i just have to not say them. <laughs> yeah i would so good. I it'd would be good fun pay, if i could i would pay for a subscription service to just read the ones you don't want to send <laughs> <laughs> yeah the ones that the ones that get cut. I, I want I want to be a Patreon for that. <laughs> okay, well that might be a source of income in the future then. <laughs> uh, what was it like for you when you saw hometown for the first time? Um. Yeah. It was. It was. I. I mean, I was a little nervous, but then when I saw him walk off the plane, I was just like, oh yeah, no, that's him. That and um, then, yeah, I was standing, there's this giant window, like the airport's just, it's tiny. It's one big window. And I'm standing there, like looking at him and he's just walking past me doing the side oh, wow. eye, but looking beyond me, he didn't even see me. And I was like right there going, hello. They couldn't quite yeah, so see was, through the was uh, window, actually. <laughs> I just see my reflection there. I was, I was trying to look for you there. I'm like, he's in there somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> right there in the window, yeah. But um, yeah. <laughs> And then, um, did you get nervous? And then we did you get nervous uh, that maybe he was pretending not to know you? No, I just no, nothing like that. But then, um, we went, yeah, straight out, and then we forgot to even get his bag, so we had to go back in and get his bag. <laughs> Bowler said and, she um, was disapp disappointed he wasn't black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't believe he said that, but I had to read it out loud. Okay, keep going. So he eventually got out from behind the glass. Yeah, and then what he said, and then we, we had we were he was so late, his plane was delayed so much that we had to go straight to dinner. I'd booked this place. 
okay. this fancy place for dinner. And um, that was quite funny because then I realized he hadn't really done fine dining before. <laughs> so everything was really foreign to him. And yep. I remember forcing <laughs> him to eat the meat because I was like, this is good fancy meat. You can't just leave it there. And he's like, it looks funny. <laughs> so, what was it? It was, it was just beef, but, you know, done fine dining style with, I don't know, something on it. I mean, my duck came with popcorn on it. It was, it was very weird. But <laughs> That's retarded. <laughs> I'm sure it was But great. see, that's what we do here. We, um, for fun, we go fine dining. But, yeah, then I realized, oh, my gosh, he's like, I'm like Rose on the Titanic, and he's like Jack. And it was, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Did, did you have to tell him which spoons and which forks and stuff like that? or was it? Oh, it wasn't that bad. Okay. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> Home small town bear. That's exactly it. That's hilarious. Just a, a touch of isolation. <laughs> <laughs> I know this question has been asked of you guys before, and I know it's kind of in flux, but what's the latest news on the plan for where you're going to live, where you're going to go right after the wedding you're gonna have like a second wedding for your families right yeah we're mm. gonna have one in new zealand um right with my family and hopefully some of hometown's family come over but for the we're not we're going straight to where he lives after the festival yeah. and staying there till mid-january okay and then and then coming back here because i've got a job that i committed to a year ago yep or not really no it was um it was an exhibition I was meant to do when we had that big flood, and now I have to do it same time, year later. So, yeah. Right. What are you going to do for work then? I, I'm hoping that, because, um, yeah, I guess the pipeline job should be done by then. From what I understand, everything will be wrapped up. As far as uh, my career, they should be wrapped up end of August, maybe end of September. But uh, from what I understand, I can request a layoff at that point. And so, yeah, my whole goal is just to have a whole bunch of savings, be debt free, and then I can just actually coast along in New Zealand for a little while. And I thought that should work out. But uh, if I can find some remote animation work, yes, um, then I was just going to take that with me. Cool. Uh, somebody said something. Oh, Samoan Poppy wanted to know: Do you call him hometown or his name? I, I call him. He said his, his name. He said yeah. his real name earlier in the stream. So if anybody wants to. Then go back and find it. It's a little detective job for you. <laughs> you won't know my last name. That that would be the big mystery. Okay. And when you find out, you're going to laugh. You're going to laugh so hard. I'm like, yep, that's my last name. So I'll leave that one. That's hilarious. It's a real problem in the bear community <laughs> because uh, I know so many bear. I, I know, I'm, I'm not saying a lot, but I know people's real names and then you kind of get all you got get all messed up in your mind, like, oh, should I? I guess I got to call them their bear name, you know, all that stuff. Pretty funny. <laughs> Devin knows yeah, your real name. Bear. That's hilarious. Devin, Devin, Devin knows my name. If, <laughs> if he gets hard up for okay. money, he could. Here's a hint. If he gets hard, uh, it's, it's if he gets hard up for money. Dutch. He could start a thing where he, you know, like for a hundred bucks, he'll tell people your name just privately. You know. If anyone <laughs> wants to do a Google search on the cook in Dutch. Then you'll know my name. Ah, hey, do you did you ever hear the the expression "You're not much if you're not Dutch"? Oh yeah, yeah, plenty. <laughs> I uh, I used to uh, have a painter that painted houses, and his name was Lou Steinen, and he had a he was Dutch, and he had a a van, and he had a bumper sticker that says "You're not much," and it was spelled Y E R. It was like "You're okay. not much if you're not Dutch." Y E R, and I thought. <laughs> Well, you're illiterate. <laughs> Audubon test it. There it you is. It. There oh, it is. Okay, well, there it is. I'm not going <laughs> to say it out loud. People will have to see it on the replay on YouTube. It's an unfortunate last name for me. Yeah, yeah you asked, like, <laughs> could we hyphenate that last name? I said, it's still got it in there. Yeah, There's you can. There's nothing you can do about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you can imagine with my last name, you know, the... The, uh, yeah, it's a good thing we didn't put both our last, our actual last names together. It's hometown and Telecaster Bear. It's not gag and then mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I even made a joke on stage at the festival that made it into the documentary where I said, "I'm I'm Joe Gagan, 
or as you heard Owen say, gag, and I think he's trying not to call me gay. So that made it in the that made it in the documentary. <laughs> but it's all you know, my you know, my grandfather pronounced it Gagan and that's just always what it was. And you know, even when I was growing up, I don't think gay was well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know when that really became like a mainstream thing, but just a happy old boomer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> MJ, how dare you, MJ? Are getting worse and worse. <laughs> no, I do, I do, I, I respect <laughs> Owen for trying not to call him gay. I, I think that was nice of him, but whatever. <laughs> if I can just add to this whole thing about my last name, I mean, I'll just put it out there. My sister's name, uh, who uh, led, led me to Owen, her name is Anita. So now you can imagine. <laughs> Imagine the jokes growing up with that. It's like, so it's, people have asked me, like, what's it like growing up with a, a last name like that? And I said, you have to grow a sense of humor quick or else you're not going right. to survive out there. That's right. basically it. There's a real famous guitar guitarist named Greg Cox, spelled K-O-C-H. And um, he's a real tall guy. He's a great guitar player. Uh, and you know a lot of people would pronounce that coke like the coke brothers k-o-c-h but he's made it yeah. he's made it like his mission in life to make sure that people know to pronounce it as cock and, and i think he's uh the being a bit of a dick Coke brothers you know that whole um that whole organization you know i bet you they call it coke because they're really insecure about what their real name is so yeah we can just call them the cock bro do they, and they're like but i'm not one of them do they have dutch uh are they dutch also i think it's it's K-O-C-H, but, you know, I have this uh, suspicion that that's actually how it's pronounced. It's the cock yeah. road. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was just the, the media trying to make them sound uh, less threatening or something. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. They used to be the enemy of the left, and then we all found out they were, you know, everybody was on the same team, so. <laughs> yeah, it's just something. These things, yeah, they're like, you know what? Maybe the right is actually a little bit more in a rollerblading than we realized. Oh, yeah, it's it's crazy what's come out. And, you know, I, I'm not surprised. Nothing surprises me that comes from the beast anymore. Yeah, exactly. I was waving at Clark Bear. Hey, Clark Bear. Yeah, Clark Bear is a crutch. His memes always make me laugh. I Who, uh, haven't made a meme in weeks, and I feel withdrawals. I don't know what's wrong with me. Mm. Well, you'll get get to it when you can. What oh, yeah, but there, you... I got one more thing to add to that, too. My brother's middle name is Ben. There's another joke for you. <laughs> yeah, I get it. That's funny. Um, who? What are the other animators that you've collaborated with? Other animators? Um, so in the, I, mean, I, in the I guess I worked movie, with uh, hand-drawn bear before. a little bit. Um, so I'm sorry, I, say I, again. I, I, I interrupted. Say it again. Uh, I collaborated with hand-drawn bear a little bit. I guess when I was working on a cartoon, I requested her to uh, make a few backgrounds for me. She's out of here. And I paid. She's out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, anyway, it's, we can know, still talk too, about her. It was cool. Yeah. But. but you know, the way I saw it was that she just wanted to go our own way. I, yeah. I didn't notice any drama coming from her. So I thought, oh, it's unfortunate. But yeah. you know what? You know, God bless and hope you do well. Well, and just while we're on that topic, uh, Jessie G knocked it out of the park with her with her artwork for episode five, issue five. Definitely. That was five. like the first time she had used that program to procreate. Mm -hmm. It's so, it's, it's it. so yeah. um, colorful. I loved it. I lo I've loved her art a long time. Uh, what's interesting is um, when she became aware that I was an animator, because um, she told me that she went to uh, Sheridan in uh, school in Ontario. Oh. And that's one of the animation schools that, you know, that's where I get a little ire in me where I'm like, must be nice, because that would have been like, I would have been a much more different level animator had I gone to that school. Mm. But um, she was very well um, aware of the my animation skill. And uh, she was working on Green Eggs and Ham for Netflix at the time. This is wow. before she had her first kid. But then she said, here, I'll let you uh, talk with my supervisor, uh, Roger Chiasen. And he was one of the uh, former animators on uh, Roger Rabbit or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. So, yeah, I ended up talking with him on the phone for an hour. And 
he saw my, uh, some samples of my work, but he said, unfortunately, it's not quite there. He gave me some suggestions of things that I can try and push for, and then I can send him another reel, and then, you know, we can go from there. Because I think they were working on um, a Space Jam 2 at the time. Yeah, and then yeah. I think he said there's also, well, okay, sorry, I'm, I'm, let me back up. They had animators on uh, Looney Tunes cartoon that they're making for uh, HBO, but they had to take some of the animators from that show and put them on the Space Jam 2. And uh, then I guess there were some openings, but he wanted to see if I actually had the skill to work on it. Um, he said it wasn't quite there. There's some things I needed to work on it. He said I had a bit of that Hanna-Barbera style, which he said he loves, but it's limited. So he said, I need you to kind of break out of that habit and try something that's more fully traditional. But aside from that, we just geeked out about animation for basically the hour on the phone. So we're just, he's just name dropping all what these different the, old animators. You know, what was the... I can picture what you're talking about, but I'm, I think people would be interested to know, like, what were the defining characteristics of the Hanna-Barbera style? It was very simplistic with really thick outline lines. Very, uh, very communicative with their shapes. So they, um, yeah. like, if you look at Yogi Bear, for instance, like, very, very simple shapes. But if you're to put them into a silhouette, you can clearly tell who it is. Yes. And on top of that, it was the line quality um, surrounding the characters. So they would have a exactly. uh, thinner exactly. line on the top, but then as it get to the bottom of the character, like his belly and under his chin, lines are thicker. So it showed more weight and just little things like that. So it was all yeah. about the appeal. And that was just the design aspect of the characters. But then on for the animation, they clearly didn't have the budgets of Warner Brothers or Disney. But um, they understood uh, just like reusable animation. So, you know, a classic example is when in Flintstones, when they're running down or chasing somebody, the background just keeps repeating. And then their legs are just doing the same animation over and over. And they just use that gag over and over again. So, I mean, that was a good example of what Hanna-Barbera did. Good. It so looks keep, less keep fluid going with your, than it was. Keep, uh, this is all, I love this progression, so keep going. I just I wanted to clarify that. Um, and yeah, I guess a lot more slapstick gags. So uh, they can go from, I guess if I can show the camera here, it's uh, they would do more snappier timing. So you would have this timing where say, here's one drawing, see the person's hands hanging down by their side. You'd have like, one drawing coming out here. The next drawing is way up here. And then maybe just two more where it kind of stops. So it just kind of had like this kind of motion where it's really snappy. Yep. And yes. they would do things like that without animating the full body it would just be like um just like maybe just an arms moving or just the head moving but you know of course in disney they had fully traditional like uh they would have to break down the entire body and redraw every single frame and whereas with just these characters they would just animate an arm and then you could pump out lots and lots of seconds of these shots and then yeah cool so you um, keep going with your, your career progression. This is interesting. Um, um, well, I guess not much really happened after the whole um, talk with Roger there, but uh, we just geeked out about animation for a good hour. And it definitely gave me an, uh, some hope that, you know, because it's something I always want to do is work on like Looney Tunes, because that's always what I've been inspired by. Yeah. I mean, you might have noticed uh, Bear has mentioned like, oh, your style looks like Ren Stimpy or Cross with Looney Tunes or something. And, I've always aspired to draw like that, but just with time constraints and everything, I haven't actually um, got confident uh, animating fully traditional yet. Something I would still like to do. And I think I can do that well into my 50s and 60s. I could still be learning. Right. It's, yeah, exactly. Bud Bear wants to know how has AI impacted? I don't think as much as... Um, people think it um it's going to take over animation like it can definitely um do like a rotoscope type of um animation and rotoscope for in case anyone knows that's like uh, if you've seen this movie scanner darkly that's like live action um film and then you just draw over top of each and every frame oh, right. and it has a very peculiar look to it some of, some um, of 300 was done like that i think not 300 but as far as i know is scanner darkly and then well the director richard link later he did uh days and confused he made another film called uh waking life yes yeah. that was one of his, that's a, that's a his one first of his foray into uh rotoscope animation yeah. yeah and the person who popularized the, uh rotoscope animation that, was ralph Bakshi. sorry to interrupt didn't you find that that movie visually beautiful it was 
really interesting and uh waking life was uh he he would do the rotoscope but then he would break it into a lot more different styles so i think they brought in different artists it was very fluid i remember the press about it at the time he really did bring different teams in for the different scenes yeah Where it was cool Skinner dark was very consistent throughout the whole show right so uh, samoa and poppy um we might get to um sound of music stuff but <laughs> maybe not tonight <laughs> Anyway, Sound of music. I, I never watched that in school, but I barely remember the movie now. I've never even seen it because I don't like <laughs> musicals. I didn't. I should have even said anything about Sound of Music. That, that <laughs> movie sucks. We have two questions. Uh, yeah, this is fascinating. I hope everybody loves it. I love it. Poor Bear says, what's the best way to learn how to animate in 2023 for someone who has never done it? Poor Bear has been doing wonderful videos for Hanging With Bears, and we're very uh, appreciative, and it's really fun to watch his um, his skills grow as time goes on. Um, I think there's, um, I mean, there's all kinds of resources on the internet, and, um, you know, I mean, that's, I know that's a very, like, basic answer, but you can go to find certain channels on YouTube, and some people do fantastic jobs of breaking down animation principles, um, how to storyboard and how to um, convert storyboards into like an actual, um, just a key, um, key drawing and then taking it from there and in between the, between the different keys. And yeah, there's all kinds of um, reference you can get from movies and things like that. So it's just having a good watchful eye, just seeing like how they animate a basic scene. And once you understand the principles and the timing charts, it becomes pretty straightforward. You well, can- the cool thing any about, level of um, drawing skill and you can just give it a shot the cool thing about, about poor bear is even though he's really a just a beginner there's you can tell there's a soul like he actually has like a a really cool sense of comedy even with his skills being rudimentary you can tell there's a real comedy mind in there it's it's cool and soul mm -hmm. i like uh, when he made you dance. Oh no, we that don't. Funny. I don't. That was bullshit. I, he actually. <laughs> that was great. He actually got in trouble with, for that, but fine. Fantastic. <laughs> I don't. That no, it's, Yeah. Um, oh, so, oh, yeah. Uh, as far as learning animation, that's actually one thing I wanted to do in uh, New Zealand. Um, I wanted to. I was considering opening up an animation workshop because there's not much for animation studios there. There's just actually a it's mostly 3D over there, but not much going on for 2D animation. And I thought that actually could be an opportunity, but not to open up a studio and take on contracts from other um, major companies, but just actually do a workshop, which is about maybe four months, four or five months, teach about 10, 12 students. Yeah. And I think what I can do is you're not being certified or having a diploma or anything. You're just learning the very basic stuff, like, you know, your principles and how to animate like head turns and blinks and um, acting the dialogue, all that stuff I can, and also how to use the software more proficiently. I could probably teach that within four or five months. And it's something that's like, you're not going to be a masterclass animator because that takes years, but it's enough where say, if you have a plumbing company, you just want to make a, something for your own website to help advertise your business, that would be more ideal. But if you want to become a true animator, you can take it further and maybe we can do one-on-ones. And that's something, yeah, I thought could actually be, um, yeah, a good business that idea. Sounds cool. Uh, Juju is about to leave, but she had a question. She wanted to know, Wobbly, what your favorite flower is. She's going to plant some in France in your honor, apparently. I think it's peonies. Well, or, I don't know if she already um, left, so you might have to message her. That's okay. a, it's a nice name, peonies. It reminds me of horses. Or chrysanthemums, yeah. Cool. The questions are rolling in. Uh, I, I want to talk about that seminar idea you had for a second, though. Uh, about 13 years ago, I got real heavy into car design. I had always wanted to be a car designer when I was a little kid. And there's really only one school in the U.S. and probably the one that the whole world really looks at that's art center for design in pasadena that's where pretty much all the car designers go to school there and by around 2010 or so a bunch of forums started facebook groups and all these retiring uh, automotive designers from detroit were going online and putting all their portfolios on and they were really they were starting to get old and they were really enjoying kind of passing on their knowledge and i ended up on some forums and i actually paid a 
a tuition fee to do a 10 week course on on a certain way to to illustrate cars for for design and it, it was awesome even though I, I never did anything commercially with it it was really cool to do that so i think you're right i think there are a lot of people that would probably do it that don't even want to get into the business but maybe have a use for it or just love it and want to want to have a, a cool skill yeah absolutely i hope that wasn't too much of a sidetrack i, no, I get no, accused no. of so oh, much that's, that's i get perfect. accused of so much bullshit from these people <laughs> you're fine <laughs> um you're let's see if i can job. find uh, fellow races, uh, fellow race bear says our characters like Uncle Ruckus copyrighted. I would follow Port Bear's desire. So there, you've got two potential uh, clients for your seminar. Okay, perfect. Uh, so so yeah, the question is, Uncle among, Ruckus copyrighted? I hate to say that I'm actually I'm kind of un unfamiliar with Port Bear. So he's another um, bear animator we have in this community. He does all the. Um, he does all the. Um, the promo film the little promo videos for all the hanging with bears okay perfect yeah yeah definitely there's definitely things i can teach with that for sure i think like he did some really cool stuff with like the uh the i think it was the car coming towards uh, the camera and then he put like stunt man's face on it like i i didn't know that that was actually drawn by him but that's really cool because i, I love that I kind of exactly style where it's like really forced some... perspective He's using some shit you just get on your phone for free, probably. I don't know what he uses. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just speaking of um, if, if that is actually his style, um, <laughs> you know, he's going to have to show me, like, maybe uh, some proof there, I guess. <laughs> now you've uh, put some doubt in my mind. I don't know. But uh, just yeah, uh, speaking of that style. Here, um... <laughs> uh, but uh, he'll, he'll speak for himself. Uh... For sure. Um, but... Uh... Uh, yeah, speak of that style, that forced perspective, there's um, an animator that, um, or an artist that I'm really inspired by, uh, his name is Robert Valley, and he's worked on some really cool stuff. He's worked on, like, the um, Beatles rock band, he's worked on Gorilla, um, or no, he was uh, in, mentored by a guy who worked on Gorilla's music videos, and that guy does, like, the really unique proportions, and uh, when he does, like, a, like towards, like, um, forced perspective towards the camera, everything is, like, strange, yeah really really long forearms really long legs but it has a very unique style to it that's cool yeah he just answered the question i don't know if you are you reading the chat uh i didn't draw that it's a free app okay well i can still <laughs> teach you for sure <laughs> i mean uh, you can just look at the few simple drawings like how the guy did it like it's almost like bring coming or uh, going back to that hannah Barbera example i did where it's just like one drawing with it way off in the distance and like two more drawings and it's already towards the camera so like if you know how to draw the car like that then you're basically already know how to do it right what uh what's on the horizon for the two of you collaborating together on things I, I happen to know that you have done some things behind the scenes together, but. We actually did talk about like some cartoon ideas, I think before, but we didn't actually like uh, really commit to one yet, but I think it would be really fun if we like made our own characters and we both provided voices and yeah. Yeah. I, I think, well, I think it would. Yeah. My opinion is it would be awesome if you guys did. <laughs> That'd be a lot of fun. I think she can do some really good writing, yeah. to be honest. I think uh, Wally, I think Wally would do uh, really good with the joke writing. Yeah, she's very funny. You might have to censor my stuff, though. I'm looking at questions, and I'm doing a bad job of deleting. Uh, oh, was it uh, Longbow? Oh. Um, you said you struggled drawing stick figures. This is something I've always told people who say, like, I can barely draw a stick man. I said, if you know how to draw a stick man, you know how to animate. You just got to draw a lot of stick men. That's it. Right. right. Uh, fellow Racist Bear says, oh, that's, sorry, this, that's, okay. Don't anybody tell me I have problems with tech. I'm just doing a bad housekeeping job of deleting questions. Bud Bear just had a question. Is anyone having more fun than us? No. Nobody. That's right. Nobody. Grungy's here. Uh, hey, Grungy. Grungy has let me know privately that he's going to be able to make it to the festival. He's committed. Yeah. So he will be on stage and he will, uh, we might even let him play guitar and sing. 
No, he's going to be good. It'll be good. It'll be good because I've only heard him through these hanging with beers and it sounds awful. Um. <laughs> 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 I'm sure. I mean, it's going to be great live. It's going to be great. I've uh, yet to meet Grungy in person, but, you know, he lives pretty close to my neck of the woods. So um, I think when the uh, the Bear Fest is over and uh, Wobbly and I go back to British Columbia, I think we're going to try and set up a, a BC Bear Hang. And that's with Dreadnought, Grungy, and um, yeah, hopefully a few others can make it too. That'd be great. Oh, yeah. Was it um, Castaway's Bear? Mm. Yeah. Cool. Pinksburg says, if you aren't at the fest this year, your gay may be unplayable. But I think he meant to say unpayable. And he did. He mm. corrected himself. I'm really good at uh, knowing what people were trying to say. <laughs> unpayable gayness. Yeah, that's uh, that'd be a, quite a predicament there. It's so gotta... exciting coming ahead, because I was trying to come to the fest last year and yeah. you, you guys just wouldn't let me into your country, but it's all worked yeah. out for the best. So, Sorry. you know, it's all good. <laughs> I have to go way back in this conversation to your grandfather because you talked about him telling you things that he hadn't told anyone else in his life. Mm -hmm. And I was going to make a, I didn't know where to cut in on the conversation. So I'm going to come back to it. This is a, an invitation and a challenge to everybody here go find your older relatives and try to record them, ask them all the questions that they were hoping everybody would ask them and that nobody ever thought to ask them because mm -hmm. there's a treasure of information that's, that's going to be gone Absolutely. very soon. So, um, I'm, that, I'm, that's actually a very good um, point because I wasn't expecting him to bring up some of these stories and yeah. he admitted to me or no, I think it wasn't actually him that admitted to me. Um, I remember uh, telling my mom those stories saying like, oh yeah, you know what, Grandpa, you shared me these really great stories about World War II. And then mom was just like, he's never shared those stories with me. That's right. the that's new one on me. <laughs> and so she, she was actually pleasantly surprised. That's cool. I found out that my dad's grandfather had a cigar box factory in uh, Northern Wisconsin. I had never heard that until my dad was in his eighties. Okay. That's oh, and really by cool. the way, I'm related to a Rockefeller. I am the great, 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 great grandson of John D. Rockefeller's youngest brother. And there was a whole scandal. Okay, I could tell this story real quickly. There was a whole scandal about that <laughs> because people have heard me tell it before, but just enjoy it a second time, whatever. Um, we would always, we lived in in Janesville, we lived in Waterloo, Wisconsin, about 20 miles from where my dad grew up in Janesville, Wisconsin. And we would go to my paternal grandparents' side every Sunday for like Sunday dinner, Sunday afternoon, and uh, almost every week. And almost every, because I would know there were five kids and my parents would always coach us on the way because my great grandmother, who we called Graham, was always present because they would go get her. She lived in the same town. She didn't drive, but they'd go get her. And my parents would always coach us, now don't ask where Graham's husband is. All the time I was growing up, don't ever ask about, does she have a husband or where's, where's your grandma Marion's father or any of that. You don't ask any of that. And we'd say, why? And they say, we can't talk about it. It didn't come out until uh, two years after my dad died. Some people were doing some genealogy and they found out the story. My great, 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 great grandfather or great, great, great grandfather had two families and one was the illegitimate side that my, that my grandmother came from. So they had to keep it a secret because he had his public family. And then he actually, I guess, supported my grandmother, but, but it was all on the, on the down low. And so the mystery didn't even get solved until after my dad died. It was, it was very interesting. So like I said, your name would be uh Nora Telecaster. It's confirmed bear, right? Well, it comes down through my, it got lost on the maternal, you know, there's always that maternal leg. It got lost on the maternal leg because my, my grandfather is Joe Gagan. My dad mm -hmm. is Robert Gagan, but the, the Rockefeller side comes from my paternal grandmother. So the, the name didn't follow on the maternal line. Okay. But I just, I just know that I have a lot, a lot, a lot of Rockefeller grit. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I believe the the moon landing spell was a very big one. Like that was the that was the last bit of your grit. I actually, now it's all gone. It's 
funny, funny you bring that up. I actually watched the TV of the original landing at my grandmother's house. So I just happened to be there when it so you just was. remember just like how it looked like you just kind of have that, uh, that visual memory, like, you know what, something seemed really off about that even back then. Yeah, I had a little voice in my head that was like Alex Jones. Oh, something, something, something doesn't look right about this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now that you know what stop motion looks like, or uh, just like, um, I, maybe it's not like all stop motion. In fact, probably just some of it's just puppetry where it's probably just on strings and they're just kind of lowering it with a crane or something like that. It or... was, like everybody says, it was very grainy and it was black and white. So you wouldn't have been able to tell, you know, you wouldn't have been able yeah. to tell. But I remember they televised Nixon. Those photos you see of, of Nixon on the phone, they had TV cameras cameras or whatever news cameras in in the oval office with that so they, people were watching him supposedly talk to the astronauts and i didn't really get off the moon landing i didn't actually finally see that we didn't go until owen broke the spell for me that was like one of the last things that that i held on to interesting yeah yeah i mean it's one of those things um I never had any reservations when it came to like learning about the moon landing. Just once I became aware, like that's an idea, like, Oh, do you know it was all faked and everything? I was never like, Oh, how dare you? Like we totally went. It's just like, I can see that. Yeah. And I mean, I was like that with like so many of these things, like even like the whole flat earth thing. Now, well, flat earth, maybe I did have a little bit of reservation in the beginning because I was getting a little bit into my conspiracy um, side of um, life. Yeah. So I kind of thought just the same way Owen is like, I think it's a psyop to make the people who are into conspiracies look more ridiculous. But then I remembered, I just had a random thought one day, and this is just me in my more esoteric frame of thinking. I was saying like, universe, what, what if the universe is a lie? And that's pretty much what broke it for me. So then I, I thought, you know what, I'll just, I'll dive into one of these videos. And I think it was a Rob Skiba video oh, yeah. where he was yeah. explaining about uh, giants and, um, the Tower of Babel and the Nephilim and everything, and then also the heliocentric model, and then that's when it just it broke my like my whole thinking on that. I'm like, oh wow, like this is insane. And I thought to myself, like I think there's a passage in the Bible where it says that God will open up the sky like like scrolls. Right. And I thought to myself, that's how every um, person will bow down, like every demon, every person, every soul. Because can you imagine if the sky opens up? that not only reveals that it's a heliocentric world, it's we're in a realm of some kind, but if the sky opens up, everyone, you know, if you think about the movie Independence Day, where everyone's seeing the big ship coming in through the clouds, it's kind of like that. You can't, you can't take your eyes away from it. So everyone's just going to be in awe. And I thought, oh, okay, that, that will be the moment you know for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, Samoan some, some Poppy's not going to be able to relate because they didn't have a spaceship coming out of the sky in The Sound of Music. <laughs> well, probably, what was your what was your progression into all this stuff about starting to question narratives? Um, I could, I remember questioning the moon landing way back in high school. I had a um, media teacher who showed us this um, documentary showing us how it was fake, but it was all dramatized, and he was trying to show us that it it was a dramatized doco and it was actually real, and these people are crazy. But I was like, actually, <laughs> some pretty, they make some pretty good points. Um, but yeah, I didn't really, really think about it or care till later. And then it was when I became a bear that I just started questioning everything. And um, it, it came quite easily to me once I saw a, a good, some good evidence. I was like, oh, yeah, because I'm not invested in any of these things. So it didn't, nothing phased me. So, oh, yeah. But Owen made That's it cool. really entertaining. And it was super entertaining, yeah. And then the flat Earth one, um, a, a bit like on it, I took a while to come around, but um, yeah. And I certainly, I actually no, I have convinced my sister of that, and my mother, and almost my father. But yeah, everyone else will get really crazy and uh, attack you if you even suggest it. But yeah. Oh, she's definitely done. So something because when her mom likes every post to make about how we didn't go to Mars and she's on Baffin Island. Nah, she, and she's, I know that her mom's like these yeah, posts. I'm like yeah. <laughs> She's onto it. My sister's onto it. Dad's coming around to everything. So that's, that's awesome. Great. Uh, <laughs> my mom is getting uh she's eighty five and she's getting very uh 
dementia it out. I don't know if it's Alzheimer's. I don't know what it is. But in the last three years or so, I've been telling her that uh, I've been telling her little bits and pieces about what I what I believe. And she's very fascinated. I'm the oldest son. And uh, I think she wants to believe me. But who knows? She's, you know, her mind is, you know, so who knows where it's all where it's all at now. We have some questions. If Cucumber is still here, I have to admonish him. He put in a comment and put it in the question section. So he thinks that I just automatically have to read it because he put it in the question section. No, sir. You rewrite it in the, it's not a question. Whatever you said, I don't even remember. But here's some questions. I don't, I don't take any, I don't take any, uh, oh, well, I guess. <laughs> Cuc I guess Cucumber deleted that other thing, whatever he said. But this is actually a question. It's for both of you. What questions have you got lately that you liked answering? Oh, oh boy. You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. Kind of stumped on that one. I guess, uh, well, <laughs> recently was just one like how we met. Um, just a good opportunity to explain to the bear how it all sort of unfolded. So that was actually, that was a good one. Uh, I'm glad to uh, share that. Flyboard bears just talking about how it's hard to talk to his family. I'm I'm lucky because most of my family, bar my brother and brother-in-law and grandparents, woke up to that whole thing. And um, since then, it's been easier to wake them up to all the other little things. And um, it's been great because we can make jokes and we have we have a laugh about it. Um, but yeah, I imagine it's it's pretty rare for. For you to be able to turn your whole family into this um, flat earth conspiracy <laughs> believing I want to person. Thank, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't know you weren't done. I want to thank everybody done. for being here. We had 49 a minute ago. It's, the numbers are increased. You guys are very, very, very popular. Uh, uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. I have a question, and everybody, everybody has to answer in the chat. If you knew ahead of time there was going to be a special guest, type Y in the chat if you knew ahead of time time that it was going to be wildly. So anyway, yeah, but type in if you didn't know who the guest was going to be. And that and that uh, fake Owen at the beginning, that, that doesn't count. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, hometown. Yeah. Wobbly was the only one who knew that I was going to do that gag ahead of time. And she had, she had to promise not to spill the beans because I wanted to see your genuine All right, reaction. Good there. I mean, it, was, it was pretty funny just because yeah it was just kind of like oh and he's just like he's like looking off and he's kind of thinking like yeah he's not engaged <laughs> and of course the screen and everything <laughs> bud bear put in a g i don't know bud is not taking this seriously and he is in serious jeopardy of getting evicted <laughs> from the chat e and yeah and stands for something else yeah <laughs> Fellow racist oh, bears we got asking a me hard R after that, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they turned it into something else, of course. Fellow racist bear says, "Isn't your mom in a cryogenic chamber for the Rockefellers?" Well, if you listen to the story, fellow racist bear, it was on my dad's side, so my mom would not have had anything to do with the Rockefellers. My mom was German. She's German. She's still alive. German. Cucumber. What questions have you got lately that you like to answer? I heard that one. But. <laughs> Bud Bear says, will there be a Wobbly Town baby at the 2024 festival? That's a good question. You missed the uh, Good question. And uh, I say Hopefully. we can look forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's the best collaboration. Forget all the art and there bullshit. You go. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I've talked about animation quite a bit throughout the years, but I'd love to be talking about what it's like being a dad. Yeah. It's going to be great. Twins. <laughs> twins. I wouldn't yeah, that mind. Would cool. I wouldn't mind having twins because you know, two at once, especially at my age, get it done. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> well, do you have a favorite hometown cartoon? Oh, um, do I? I think I like <laughs> the book of Vince. I just love that whole bit. I remember hearing it live, like way before. He he made the cartoon and I found it just really funny. So that's cool. <laughs> I, I yeah, think that was my favorite one. was the, was the, uh, 
flute lady or whatever what's it called oh uh, yeah yeah well that one's not finished but yeah that that's pretty good too uh they're all good Teddy bear might have gotten here late he says where or maybe he did maybe he didn't like the answer he i think he was here at that point but he wants to know where will you settle together i think he's asking like what the long-term plans are i guess we have I haven't 100% uh, decided on that, but I'm definitely leaning towards a uh, life in New Zealand. Cool. Um, yeah, just because, I, you know, she's close yeah. to family and uh, when she becomes pregnant, I would like that she's close to her mom and close support with her relatives because it's really important to have that, have them close by. Cool. I'm trying to uh, type Sorry about this. Smuggled into the Ozarks. <laughs> yeah, she had to ask a, a strong mermaid bear, what's it like down there with all the uh, the snakes and spiders and everything? The bugs and, yeah. It's not, she, it's not bad. She, you know, I, I she stopped. Pre she prepared me. It's fine. I stopped wearing shoes in late February. I had to wear them today to go out into that desert uh, junkyard. They would have been too treacherous without it. And it was probably 95 degrees out. So I had to wear shoes today, but I'm planning to not wear shoes at the festival. I don't know if I'll get asked to leave or anything, but so I don't know. I might get a bunch of ticks on my feet and stuff. There's a lot of stickers and stuff. So we'll see how that lasts. I'll probably take some shoes for a backup. I'm I just have... used to nothing around being able to hurt you or any, anything like that. My, my so, son Scott is yeah. not Maybe. a bear, but he came up. Everything they got in Zealand is a jellyfish or something like that. The only things that can potentially hurt you, but yeah, that's about it. Right? Yeah, jellyfish sting. That's oh, the yeah. scariest thing we've yeah. got. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing. My son Scott came up with a new line of uh, apparel for the bears. Instead of Fubu, it's called uh, Fubu. It's uh, four bears by bears. Four bears by bears. Fubu. And he said that Fubu. it's uh, yeah. And it's uh, it's basically just cones that go on the back bottom of your pants, and they cover up where your shoes would be, so nobody knows your bare feet. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm gonna okay. wear those at the festival. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, it'd be easy to spot then. I mean, if it wasn't for the beard, now we got the shoes, right. so we got some really good identifiers. Spirit Spirit of Erinan wants to know who's got the hobbit feet. I don't know what that's about. Hairy feet. Hairy um, feet, yeah. Yeah, well, everyone in New Zealand has feet. really I'm hairy feet. 12, so I don't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It was funny because the guy at the at the junkyard that we went, that we went out to this guy's place out in the desert that has no running water. His dog food bill is $500 a month for all the pit bulls he has running around. He has no running water, no refrigerator, no <laughs> power. So they haul in water. He's been living there since 2008. He's an old divorced guy, 69 years old. And he was running around in sandals. And he had the worst looking toenails I've ever seen in my life. And I happened to be wearing shoes. So it was all like everything was like all nails, <clears throat> right? They're all like kind of curling like that. They were like yellow and long. It, it was crazy. They were like, ugh, that was I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, but you did. <laughs> I, yeah. Oops. Uh, you know what? Actually, yeah, it's, speaking of uh, Tolkien uh, and Hobbits and everything. So, yeah, when I went down to New Zealand, um, I told Wobby, like, you know that I'm down there. I got to do the tourist thing. We got to check out Hobbiton, right? It's just, it seems like something I got to do just because being a fan of Lord of the Rings and everything, yeah. I want to check this out. But after we walked through it, it was like, we were pretty impressed with just like how the whole place is set up. And then we initially thought maybe we could do the wedding here. Like would they actually do such a thing? So then I checked on the website and they actually had it in their brochure that, yeah, you can do weddings here. And I thought like, actually for what they're offering, the price is pretty reasonable, but you know, we'll just keep in the back of our minds. But then, yeah, sure enough, um, Owen <laughs> offered the uh, bear fest instead. And he says, yeah, and you guys don't have to go into debt over that or anything. Let's just make it a big fun thing. It's on the house. And then that was just like, that was the that was a huge treat just to hear that. So, yeah, you, you know, don't have all to, the bears you don't... that want to be involved, I, I, I really am so appreciative. We're, we're both very appreciative of that. It's going to just be so nice to share it 
Like, well, yeah, you don't, you don't have to go into debt because, as we've already talked about behind the scenes, you're just going to give the band the 10000 cash, and so there won't be any debt involved. <laughs> oh, trying to try to try to pull a quick one right <laughs> uh there's another question uh ukrainian what would wobbly really like to see at the bear fest wedding a type of meal decoration etc i have no um there's i don't know anything anything will be amazing i didn't think of decorations yet um Bunting? <laughs> I don't know. See you later, Longbow. Yeah. Later, Longbow. Much, much love, Longbow. Food? I don't, I don't know. Any Anything. I know it'll be good because someone probably just freshly killed it or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cricket yeah, sound guess, uh, that Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. I guess Devin said that I got crickets for my joke. <laughs> yeah, I so are you not playing that sound to be funny? No, that's right. There's a cricket in the building. Do people hear a cricket uh, on my audio? Yeah, we can hear it. Wow. Crazy. I thought you were trying to be funny. <laughs> well, we, you, we've had that inside joke in, the, in our private chat about, I played a sound effect of crickets after Stuntman made a stupid joke. <laughs> I don't know. Cucumber wants to know what's your favorite fruit. For me, it's uh, for me, it's a steak. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Steak. If I had to choose a fruit, it would be mango. But I, I've only ever had mangoes in Australia, so I've had a got, few mangoes. Yeah, in I'll my be life. right back, guys. I got to find the the band. Uh, the band hammer has come out. Bowler has said his last. Stupid ass joke. Bowler's getting the getting what the. What did ass. he say? <laughs> <laughs> it's always crickets. It's always the damn crickets. <laughs> My crickets. They really are. Oh, oh wow! I didn't even actually hear them before. I like that. My favorite fruit is stuntman beer. You know God's watching this. Oh, that's hilarious! Just like here, I got something for you. <laughs> the the question the question section has become a place for people to try out their their jokes. So Bud Bear said, "What's next?" Uh, so I gotta say it again. I fucked it up. Uh, what's next aside from genocide? And he also said, "What's your favorite end skit?" What's your favorite hmm. what? N skit, letter N. Ah. I think he's talking about, about the Negro skits. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't think of which one I like the most. I think Samwise is trying to make a joke about a cricket game starting. <laughs> I think this I think this thing is going off the rails. I think I just totally screwed this up. Well, you're in charge. You're the host. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. Well, I'm so glad I got I had you guys on. Uh, this was all I hoped it would be and more. <laughs> oh, it's good to good to chat. Yeah, Anybody that wants to really know more about uh, animation, cartoon, comedy, get a hold of Hometown directly. I'm sure he'll talk to you. I'll uh, you can play start... as best as I can. Yeah. Uh, Back Sky 2.0 says, what makes you upset to the point that it's over for you in a relationship? That's an interesting question. I don't know who that's to, but no. uh, go ahead and answer it if you, if you have an answer. I think there commitment, I think commitment uh, overrides anything if you have faith. But I know, I was just, just thinking of like, um, I was trying to think of like, well, in the back of my mind, you know, something like bad happened, I thought, well, well yeah, like, like what you said, if we're committed enough to each other that it shouldn't be able to override anything. Right. And I think that's probably the answer I would have for that, so I, I really don't know. Well, if a guy, because... if a man or a woman is just screwing up so bad, like they're an addict and they refuse to, they're, they, they just won't do what it takes to get off what they're on, or if they're just, if they're being unfaithful, 
I guess I, I just don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. What would, what would end it for me is if the guy couldn't say <laughs> Okay, well, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's, a good, that's a good answer. <laughs> and over. <laughs> and the stream. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that'll get us a strike on on uh, YouTube or not, but we'll try it. Hey, I could bleep it. I mean, now nah, yes, you could actually. You're the the people it. wanted it, so they got it live. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got all the questions. That's cool. Maybe somebody deleted one. Great. Well, <laughs> thanks again for being here. Uh, we'll try it again. Maybe we'll do one after the festival and kind of like do a recap of what happened for the people that weren't there and here we'll be able to hear how it went down from each of your perspectives. Uh, but uh, everybody loves you guys and you are the Royal couple of the bears. If there is such a thing, <laughs> in my opinion, I don't know if anybody else is saying that, but. Well, I think you said it before, this will be a good part of a uh, bear lore. And I That's like right. how you worded that. Yep. <laughs> it's a, it's a crazy story. We'll but have it's to maybe, um, create a of a tapestry or something like that and we can just like yeah make it look all medieval and put on parchment paper or something like that there have there have been uh dozens of great couples that got together because of the app or because of being bears and the stories are all incredible in their own way but i don't think there have been any couples that got together that were this well known in the community so that's why i say what i'm saying about that the ones that come close are uh, Jonah Bear and Oddball Bear because they are their crushers. How dare you, Bowler? <laughs> he does, Bowler. He does. He can't not. That's say hilarious. Yeah. Uh, everybody's hitting the heart, so I guess everybody loves the stream. <laughs> so, getting great reviews already. There's one more question. I think. All right, I'm getting. Oh, uh, Bud Bear wants to know: Can you say? Uh, I won't say it, just in case the the algorithms looking for it so the answer to your question bud is i i can't say it on stream i got in trouble i think i got in trouble i got I, our first youtube strike is because of me uh saying that word so i've time stamped it i'll i'll, I'll um i'll uh, bleep it out there you go i so far managed to get by just fine with my cartoons they're in there and i haven't bothered censoring them and uh i don't know the one thing that's actually um, kind of messed with my algorithms was uh, posting a video of, um, was it a grabber rubbing his hands in, in a hand shadow? I found some funny video on Twitter and I posted and it went viral for a little bit to the point it actually got posted on the anti-Semitism page on uh, Instagram. And that's when I suddenly noticed that the algorithms were changing with my page. So I thought mm -hmm. to myself, like, I don't know, like maybe they were, um, they just kind of of uh blacklisted it or something for a little bit it still gets like decent count but uh i know it's a little change there i hope you yeah, it's, you're i don't i don't even i mean i try to be a good boy because i anti-semitism page <laughs> i try to be a good boy you made on this my one Instagram because post <laughs> i don't want to lose it um not for commerce reasons but just because instagram for all of its faults it's really the great it's the greatest format for the kind of thing we do the way we stream like this um, mm -hmm. So I try to keep my ability to live stream, and I've done. I've been a good boy, so I'm I'm learning not to say certain things. Cool. Well, thanks again. Yeah. I love you guys, and we'll talk again soon. <laughs> and this has been Hanging with Bears, episode five fifty. Sweet. Thank Easy. you very much, Joe. Thanks. Really appreciate Joe. it. Good to see you. Later, Bye, bears. bears. Have a good weekend.